Welcome everybody to Mog Talk. Uh, if you guys are unfamiliar with Mog Talk, it's a show based around the Final Fantasy XIV community discussing everything from Savage Rating to Chocobo Racing. Uh, and today we're going to be discussing uh, a couple interviews that we got. Uh, Frosty, me, uh, had an interview with Yoshida, and Happy over here had an interview with Yoshida. Uh, unfortunately, I may have confused people with the wording. Uh, this is not an interview directly with Yoshida today. Instead, we were discussing email interviews that both of us had. <laughs> Wait, so we're not sorry. getting Yoshi P on? No, no, unfortunately. You lied to me! Today. I, I know, I know. I, I told you to come on the show, and we, we do the interview with Yoshida, but he couldn't make it. I, I'm I'm very, very sorry, Bellana. I'll just pull out my red phone. We'll get him on. Oh, yeah, we'll just call her. We got a phone on our desk that we just call Yoshida up on every once in a while and just talk to him. Uh, yeah, mine's what? shaped like a knob. So hold on. <laughs> oh, mine's a Moogle. Just, there you go. Yeah. Yours looks uh, a lot more like a phone than this. It does. All right, let me introduce everybody. I have a so circle. <laughs> For some reason, I thought of Ralph from The Simpsons when you said that. That's what I was going for. <laughs> All right, let me introduce everybody so you know who's on the show. You probably already know him, but I'll, I'll go ahead and introduce him anyways. Uh, we'll go for starting, uh, kind of clockwise, whatever. Uh, Ren, can you tell everybody uh, who you are? Hi, everybody. I'm Ren Karagani. I'm a PvP main. No, but for this month. <laughs> And I have transmogged my suit. You can find me yeah. playing PvE content and uh, hanging out with these badasses. Yeah, yeah. He looks super casual today. I, I asked him particularly if he could come on casually instead of being all dressed up because I feel intimidated when he comes on with a suit. Uh, it is very difficult me, for me to do a show while I'm just looking at Ren the entire time. So uh, I appreciate that today, Ren. Uh, next, uh, you may know him, uh, this guy, uh, I can't say I'm happy ever because it's his fucking name and then it's always a joke afterwards. So, Happy, could you tell everybody who you are? I'm Mike. That's, <laughs> there we go. There we go. Say? Hey, I, I am Mr. There you go. That's, Mister. that's what I had to, yeah, Bolana should understand that joke. Yeah. Yep. I, I understand uh, it too. I've seen your rates. That's unfortunate. <laughs> tell everybody who you are. I Hell. make content for stuff. I don't like introducing myself. I don't like it. All right. All right. So I, I uh, let me good, do it. I don't like saying good things about myself. Uh, hey, everybody. All right, so. Mr. Happy there. And he likes to make content for you. <laughs> That's what you were waiting for. Huh? <laughs> it's all right. I'd rather he say it. Okay. Everybody knows who Happy is. He's been around the community forever doing content of all different types. Guide making, podcast with, uh, what was it? <laughs> State of the something. I don't, I don't know anymore. Uh, Dude, I can't believe they ripped me off for... <laughs> yeah, the state of the... We got what Yoshi was... here now. He heard you were yeah. here. There you go. Yoshi's oh, here. something there of the... What was he called? What did they call that thing? Estates uh, of the Realm. Oh, Estates of the Realm. That's right. Game. Yeah. <laughs> uh, lawsuit pending. It's okay. Yeah, yeah. Uh, if they ever wanted to put a lawsuit on us, they could destroy us, like, immediately. <laughs> Uh, all right, and last but not least, one of the um, most long-running, I think the Arthas might be the only person who has more shows than Bellana here, uh, and maybe it's my wife. Close. My wife was here a lot during the beginning of Mog Talk, and she's like, fuck that guy, and he doesn't come on anymore, but uh, Bellana, tell everybody who you are. Hello, I'm Bellana. Um, since it's weird to say nice things about myself, I only say mean things. Uh, I'm a washed-up world prog raider, uh, living in the Elysium retirement home now, and... Uh, yeah, uh, really excited for uh, all the things we're learning about 6.0 coming up here. <laughs> you guys are fantastic. I think this is the best uh, introductions we've ever had ever on this show, uh, bar none. Uh, okay, today, guys, we've this is called Interviews with Yoshida. I'll probably rename it on the VOD and everything so it's not so complicated. Uh, I'll leave but it. Basically, yeah, 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 they'll, I'll yeah. Leave it. Uh, He's maybe, here. You can say you're not yeah, lying he, anymore. He technically is there, right over Ren's shoulder. So this is going to be really great. Um, but both uh, Happy and myself had the opportunity to send an email over to Yoshida and have him answer some questions. And I wanted to go into some of these a little bit more detailed, uh, especially some of my questions, because after I released it, there was a, a handful of comments, uh, a little bit of confusion on the responses and everything. And I, I figure it might be good to talk about them. Um, we're not going to do this in order. I was thinking maybe we do like Happy's interview, then my interview, but I'm just going to fucking throw out random questions and sort of organize it in some way. So uh, bear with us as we do that. And, you know what's you know, funny, Frosty? Yeah, um, go ahead. 
I had a bunch of people asking me who else was releasing interviews because they thought because we both put ours out so close that it was like a like a streamer media blitz. Frosty and I had no idea we had done this. I posted mine and he went, wait, sends, sends me a message. Did you do, you did one too? And I'm like, hey. <laughs> so yeah. that's, it was just happenstance that it, that it worked out that way. Yeah, I had no fucking tour. clue. Like I, I uh, you know, I, I was doing all this and I got it back. And the day I got it back, uh, I was like, all right, well, I got to work today. Uh, let me let me go through, and afterwards, I'm going to make a video and everything. And while I'm at work, I see Happy put up a fucking video about an interview. I'm like, mother fuck. It'd be funny if they sent me your responses and I put your <laughs> yeah. Next time, let's do that. Let's do that. Let's, let's, no, let's, let's not. Play. Let's not do that. I'm going to post in chat here. I'm going to post. I'll put it on the YouTube video as well. Links directly to the text part of it. Uh, although you could definitely check out uh, Mike's video on it because he's a lot better with videos than I am. I have a video up too, but you could just read my shit. I don't, I don't care. Uh, but there they are. If you want to read them directly, I'm going to go in and actually start with the most important question. Uh, I think out of both interviews that uh, happened was about the EG, uh, Iggy Glamours. You know, uh, you know, it's wild, but we're like the most important question. Iggy yeah. Glamours. It is. It's because the answer had nothing to do. Well, it didn't have nothing to do. It had mostly nothing to do with the question. True. Yeah, that happens sometimes. That happens. Yeah, I mean, uh, the most Leave interesting part of it. Uh, I mean, we've been waiting years, right? We're like, where's Eggy Glamours? We kept just waiting for something besides the carbuncle. Yeah. No one's asked in a while. So I'm like, I got to ask. I have to yeah. know. Well,. Now we know from his response here that they put a complete halt on it. Um, I, I want to know, I, I want to ask the resident summoner here your thoughts on this. Yeah, yeah. Uh, Moi? Blana. I mean, it's kind of funny because I was just talking to someone the other day. I'm like, you know, Edgy Glad, we haven't heard anything about that in a while. But I, with the answer we they gave, are we going to read this whole thing off? Or are we going to let... You can uh, read it if you want to. I was going to, I was getting the gist of it, but... You can read it if you want to. Yeah, um, I mean, just specifically, like, what they go into is they're like, of course, they're going to rework Summoner again. Big surprise. We're going to get the, the rework in 6.0 and then probably get fixed in 6.1, as usual. Mm -hmm. um, but with how the response was phrased, I mean, I'm assuming they're going to do, like, another complete rework of the pet system. Because technically they reworked it for um, 5.0, but all they did is just make it untargetable and made all the uh, abilities OGCDs or GCDs, so it just kind of mucked the whole thing up. So it sounds like they're just going to scrap all of that and redo it, would be my guess, in anticipation of adding Beastmaster Limited Job. <laughs> well, That's possible. It seems like they played around with it with Phoenix, right? You have Bahamut, Phoenix. So they could just be doing away with the, the classic Eggies that you have leading up to it. Hopefully have something where it's like a spell-based system where... A summon comes out, does something, and goes away. Yeah, I'm assuming you'll you'll yeah. just like cast like uh, aerial slash or whatever yourself. Maybe they'll, they'll change the animations. So a little Gerudo shows up behind you when you do it. Yeah. Mm. I mean, that's yeah. what I'm taking from it. I mean, Happy, you asked a question. Is that kind of what you're pulling from it as well? Yeah. So um, I'm I'm a big fan of Yuna from the Duo Decem, the way she plays, and that's pretty much what what she does. She has no summons, and then whenever she does an attack, the summon comes out, does the attack, and then it goes away. So mm -hmm. that's kind of what I imagine based on this, but halting work on it is the interesting thing because they're not implying that they're not going to do it, but that whatever they're doing, it just they can't build it on top of that. So does, does that mean we won't need it or that it's just they, there's no point in making it for now? I, I don't know. So that's kind of what I, I thought when I saw that is like when they said we're halting, they're like, hey, don't waste your time on it. There's not going to be pets anymore. We're just done with it. They're just going to get rid of the pets. That was they're just going to make them like uh, summons like in Final Fantasy where you just do a summon, it does an attack and goes away or something. But. Well, then it makes you think about what they might do for fairies as well with Scholar since Arcanus Kid is built a little for both. Yeah. I mean, uh, we'll they may do the same thing, to be honest with you. You could just make the fairy come out, do a really big crazy heal and disappear. Well, right, right now, the two fairies yeah. mean nothing, right? Their names yeah. are irrelevant. You summon one, it doesn't matter. Mm -hmm. uh, and they have some of the same ghosting issues as well, depending on, you know, if you time them too close to Seraph, for example, or at the end of Seraph. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Well, I don't know. I thought it was very interesting because, I mean, 
uh i think how many how long has people wanted like remove like what was it when they first started uh <laughs> when, when was that, when, that 2.3 like, 2.3 2. 2. 3. long time ago yeah people okay. expect it you're like oh remove's got little eggies we're getting them well, wasn't even just expecting it. It was very much that they said, perhaps we'll develop a system. Yeah, like there's a reason we call it Eggy Glam, and he knows what we're talking about because that's the term they gave us for it. And then so. finally, they're like, you can have Carbuncle back. <laughs> <laughs> and people and were happy. Can, and you can change Muhammad's size. Yeah. yeah. We got a fancy red one, though. That was new, I guess. Uh, yeah. We didn't yeah. get the one that Alphano had, though. But Alphano, it's got like, Monica, and you're like, yeah. <laughs> and they're already all rigged yeah. they have animations they're ready to go and he's like nah not putting that in there yeah i think they actually said it like an npc says something about remu too didn't they it's in the level it's in the first summoner quest you you're you go to basically learn ramu eggy and you can't that's like yeah. the little 50 or the like 50 <laughs> heavens word one or 52 uh all right well i'll, I'll ask this last thing to balana too are, are you upset by that answer at all or do you just not I, yeah. I've 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 gone through so many reworks on my main job that I'm just I'm numb to it by now. Okay. Like, like Ed, Eggy Glamours are such a fucking meme. I'm surprised we even, <laughs> like got an answer to a question on that one. Because for the longest time, she's like, "Where is it? Where is it? All right, it's here. You guys gonna, gonna do anything else? No, no, no. It's gone. <laughs> it's done. No, yeah, you guys got it right. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Uh, all right. Well, there's uh, a handful of questions about rating here, and I figured we'd talk. There's a lot of questions that are not just about rating, but there's a few, and I figured we'd go ahead and knock that chunk out here. Uh, and I want to start, I guess, with one of Mike's questions. Uh, I think it was your third question here, talking about the development of Ultimate and everything else, uh, and it being delayed. I think you're, it was actually revolved around how they go about the whole development process in general. Oh, holy shit. Did you just, somebody just bring you a fucking drink? Got a mimosa. <laughs> I guess I just brought you a mimosa. He's like, ah, oh, shit, the raid talk. Here we go. Pull out the mimosa. But what I pulled from that question, uh, what his answer did, is that he basically said the more difficult he makes the content, the longer it's going to take to produce that content, right? Because they have to do a lot yeah, more I'm testing not... and be a lot. I mean, that makes sense. Yeah, that's it's it's I really just wanted elaboration on the, the very specifically the comment that they needed to rework development because we heard why it was delayed. They said they needed to revisit the development of it. So anything we can I guess, you know, learn about that tells us uh, sets uh, up expectations in the future if we're like worried cuz now every ultimate that comes out everyone's going to be like if it doesn't get delayed again. So mm. <laughs> the more we know about it, the better off we probably are. Yeah. And I think that he also said something that he is still trying to figure out. I don't know how they could fucking rework how they do stuff. Because I think in the hint, let me just make sure I read that right. Because uh, I read all your questions today. I didn't read them until today, by the way. Just like, no, I just fucking... You didn't need to let me know that, but okay. <laughs> I read all yours as soon as they came out. How about that, Frosty? Oh, oh I mean, I read them before they came out, dude. Like, I, I made sure I, I hacked your network and intercept the questions because I was... <laughs> You want kidding. a shovel to dig this hole, or? You know? <laughs> I'm, I'm just kidding, man. I'm just kidding. All right. Anyways, before I kill myself more here, uh, no. When we we're talking about uh, doing this, he he did say that uh, he didn't want to go into it because he could write a full fucking book on it, right? Yeah. And I would have been okay with it, but he's got he's got other things to do. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Um, and I mean. Are you happy with that response overall, Mr. Happy? Yeah, see, I'm glad that you you decided to cut me off there because you knew what you had done in that yeah. moment. Yeah. Um, I, I always fuck you, up with that. That's not a fuck up. I'm just an asshole. Anyway, um, it's... I don't know, because I actually would have preferred even more details because it was some of it was kind of reiterating what was said the last time in the interview, and some of it was more specifically ways that they could improve it. Um, one of which I thought was hilarious was improving the average skill of the developers. And a lot of people look at that, like telling his devs to get good, but most of like, there's like 400 ish devs last I remember. And a lot of them do art or work on like casual content, like gold sauce. Like they're not, they're not cutting edge raiders is all he's saying. And mm -hmm. so that's really not that 
bad of a statement. It's not a bad statement at all. It's just, yeah. you know, the people who are most interested are the people who play test it. But also yeah. that it's they just straight up need a new project management system, which makes me feel bad because they had that panel with the project manager. And in my interview, he learned he's got to do a different job and a better job. That's kind of messed up <laughs> if you think about it after that, like two hour panel that he had to do about project management. Like, don't yeah. don't tell intern John. <laughs> no, I think during that panel too, th that was part of the discussion. It was like, hey, we have a lot of stuff and we need to rework the way that we're doing project management. I think they said that during the project management interview, didn't they? They, they said that it's like... They, meant, they said that it's, it's not like a one and done, like it's an ongoing process, right? basically. So like, yeah, they're always looking to update it, but it seems like the... <sighs> It seems like while well, a lot of us could just look to the pandemic for ultimate delay, it seems like it, it more exposed things that they could actually work on and improve to them after, I guess, a degree of complacency. That's how I interpret it at the very least, because he seems not pleased with the fact that he even had to do it in the first place. And I mean, why would he be? But yeah. it's good to know that that's like a major, major thing they're looking at, because that, that's better for us in the long run, you know? Mm -hmm. and when, they, uh, when they talk about playtesting, you got to like kind of commend them for that, that they're actually doing playtesting instead of releasing the fight and then patching it as we're doing it, because that would be really frustrating. You think of the subset of players that clear ultimates in our player base, how long it takes them to clear, and then you have these players that are the playtesters on the dev team, how many of them know how to play multiple jobs to playtest different comps and everything and can play them as proficiently? Of course we're going to judge them, which maybe we shouldn't do as harshly because we've been playing the game adamantly, right? And, you know, Happy, you've been raiding for... 10 years longer than the game's been out. So, <laughs> of course, you're in a position where you're going to clear in a timely manner. The devs aren't necessarily going to be as good as you. And if they are, great. But again, not on every job, not on every mm -hmm. comp. And maybe the eight players that they put in a playtest area aren't playing well with each other either. But, you yeah. know, they're doing their best. Yeah. Especially and ultimately. Also, just that even if they have to playtest it till it's in a in a satisfactory state, so they're not just beating it one time. We're talking about a 16 plus minute encounter that they need to make sure is tuned, that doesn't have any bugs. And every time they provide feedback, they have to wait for a team to adjust it before they can try it again. So there's a constant like back and forth process there that uh, gets overlooked. I mean, that's what else? People always no. overlook stuff. No, just, always. Yeah, you just have to do that. It's so simple. Yeah. So yeah, I mean, when we I talk don't, I don't about like the problem is <laughs> ultimate, those are fairly well done, like produced and fights, right? You know, it doesn't come out like horribly janky and they have to completely revise everything. It, it's usually it's not Heaven's good. Ward. It's not Heaven's Ward is the yeah. key. It's not Gordian. Imagine being the team oh, that had to test suppression, like, and then you <laughs> tune it and you have to get back there. Like, yeah. That takes work. Wormhole, yeah. like, there's, there's a lot of mechanics where you're like, how will this work? How will the community work with this out? Is it too easy? Is it too hard? I mean, it's yeah. also, it could be, like, overtuned at first, and it's just impossible, and they're banging their heads in the wall for, like, you know, the entire workday, like, uh, the fight's impossible. And they don't know <laughs> if they just need to get good, or, or if they need to Yeah, maybe something. they're not as good. I know uh, they do it in, like... He said that pseudo good. made golden too hard at first, right? The golden phase, it had, like, towers in it, and he made him take them out or something. It was, could you imagine having to deal with Mega Flare Towers? I mean, while doing Mega Towers during Exa Flares. Yeah, you would need to do the Mega Flare Towers during Exa Flares to dodge the Exa Flares <laughs> while standing in the towers. Yeah. And then you come up with, they probably had a really elaborate, like, Grand Octet solution the intended way, and then we get through and just run in a circle. And they were like, oh. <laughs> okay. When I mean, doubt, the, Mario Kart. I know they have, like, God Mode and all that stuff that they can do, and they can go, there's different methods for doing it, but they do have to go through it as regular players and make sure it makes sense, yeah. Yeah, back in 3.0, Manipulator, they actually never beat it without God Mode. So really? that was the really? reason why. Yeah, they, they, that's, they stopped doing that after Manipulator. They, had, they made sure they beat it without God Mode after that. Good. Mm -hmm. Most of us couldn't do it without sacking Nisi either. So. Well, it's also because yeah. the, the HP thresholds were like the eight players that, like week one, the player's HP was too fucking low for that. Like you couldn't have enough gear to actually survive some of the, um, um, was it Mortal Revolution or whatever the big raid wide is? Yeah, yeah. Was just, the darkness was, damage one? Yeah. yeah, yeah. That was just darkness damage and it just wiped the entire raid out. Like there wasn't enough mitigation to do anything about that. So mm -hmm. that kind of, I think that's one thing that probably kind of slipped by if they just did it with God Mode on. Mm -hmm. Or Verbal Win, right? I don't know if God Mode probably negates that too. <laughs> So the mana, way through the it. mana drain that yeah, we yeah, yeah, yeah. And you you just accepted it. <laughs> like, it'll be fine. <clears throat> we'll let yep. this one through. Mm. 
Yeah, All the, right. the 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 final ahead. strategies for A4 end up being just such a mess with like sacking pentacles and eating warbles yeah. and and fluid oring the boss. You off just the made stage. up you made up for the weak players, right? You're like, this person can't do this. All right, we're just not doing it. Yeah, no, I think, uh, and I'll let you know during my time uh, throughout that. Of course, I was leaving a casual static, and we were like, A3 done. We beat the fucking tier. We're done. We don't need to fucking go to A4. That's just bonus boss. You know, it's not like anything we need to really worry about. Yeah, everyone knows A3 was the final fight and Thornton was the third fight. Yeah. There we go. Yeah. Yeah, yeah that's fair. Um, so another question I ask, and I ask this, I've asked this so many times, at least three times in these interviews with Yoshida. And everyone else has asked these questions as well. But I have to just start, check the temperature. I feel like I just have to keep checking the temperature on this. Um, so I was talking to him and my question was really based around, Hey, we start seeing these really large scale, 48 man, savage, 48 player, savage fights and everything. And then it, it leads it into, Hey, what about small scale four man kind of savage fights? And this was on the second question I asked him. Um, and he came back with a pretty definitive answer of still, no, still, no, we're not looking for small scale. Cause it's just building it and finding out how to make it not unenjoyable when someone dies is their answer to it and I, a lot of people don't like that answer a wipe, right yeah yeah because i mean that's that's how you make difficult content with only four players if someone dies then you can't be done because it needs four really good players to beat it um and he said it's more likely they're going to make larger scale difficult content than smaller scale um he did also the add in a note. possibility of a higher difficulty Palace of the Dead or something, right? Yeah, and that was the last note uh, on it, is that there'd be, uh, which was something I wasn't expecting to hear, but I'm glad I did, because there's a lot of people who love Deep Dungeon, and uh, Deep Dungeon, I don't think, really got much this expansion. Um, nothing, yeah. 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 Not much as <laughs> they, they got <laughs> duels. <laughs> you know what? Angela they got duels. is like the king of, of the Palace of the Dead and, and Heaven yeah. on High, and I saw him doing the duels, so. That's true. He'll, he'll rejoice duels. over that. Uh, and so, yeah, he saw that and he was pretty excited. Uh, so maybe we'll have like more difficult deep dungeon than we currently have, like on higher levels and everything else. And I guess that's just their answer. Deep dungeon is just the answer to four man difficult content or lower, you know, uh, lower player count difficult content. Because I don't think we're ever going to see mythic dungeons here in Final Fantasy. No. And you want to know something really interesting is mm. that I think very specifically the number of being four for the party instead of five is actually a big reason for that. I think that fifth person opens things up a lot True. when it comes to doing like a really difficult low man content. But with four, I mean, what's going to happen is uh, the only way I see doing four ever is if it uses stuff like commanders or lost action. So people can yeah. make up because otherwise it's going to be two red mages, a yeah, white mage, have a red a tank have every to. time. Yeah. So why not just put it in Deep Dungeon? Yeah. Or, right? or 6.0 gives reses to more people. Maybe Paladin gets it back. In <laughs> Paladin get the res. One day. One day Paladin will get this res. I mean, it is their expansion, so... Yeah, instead of Confiteer, you can choose to cast Rays. In other words, never using it. Just let us <laughs> use Phoenix Downs in combat. Uh, That's that all. <laughs> one, one Phoenix res per player. No. Uh, yeah, if they're still unique, that would actually be kind of interesting. No, if they're, if they're still unique, that means every pull you're exiting to get another yeah, one. Yeah, going so back. I don't do that. <laughs> it has to be no, one no, per, like, game. combat. One per combat, I guess. Uh, and so I guess the other thing that was interesting was the that we're actually probably going to see more 48-player or large-scale difficult content. Um, and he gave more information on that later, and we'll, we'll jump on that in a little bit later. But uh, it was pretty cool to at least find out that that went well enough that he wants to keep with it. Yeah, but Deep uh, Dungeon's a good place to kind of like experiment with this because going to like floor 200 in Palace like isn't just a walk in the park. It's not just like no. a, a dungeon boss or anything like that. You actually need a little bit of coordination and, and work with your team, but there's also not like a whole like huge amount of rewards or incentives to go that deep. So like people who don't want to go through that struggle don't really feel pressured to do it. Mm -hmm. I mean, I maybe they'll make a 50... 50 level deep dungeon so it's more accessible to get to those hardcore levels and that will be the closest thing we'll get to it um because right now yeah. it takes like how long to get to the end of hoh not very long people are pretty Depending good at it yeah 
Yeah, HOH isn't too bad. Floor 200 of Palace is like, oof. Like, yeah, that's... Palace that's, is going to be like a day, uh, day and a half. People are stupid good at... Like, apparently, like, the people who are speedrunning Palace for, like, the Relic, the Resistance... They do it in seven hours from 50 to 200. But seven hours yeah, for, like... It's still... But, but, <laughs> but if you're going through it for, like, your first time... Yeah, first time you're going to be in there for, like... Hour. You're going to take two days to do it. Yeah. No, it's going to take weeks, because you got to, like, die and come back and restart. No, just don't wipe. <laughs> oh, just don't die. Okay. The hardest part is keeping the they same group of people either. together. Yeah, that's that's difficult. I mean, if they so could you, make or you that... get that one person the next day that reset their progress. Yeah. If oh, they could wedge wow. that content like into an hour or something of playtime, I think it'd be more accessible and more people would be happier with difficult four man content out of uh, something like Deep Dungeon. If you could squeeze all that into maybe an hour. But I don't know. Yeah, but then you get really bored of it pretty quick. Like you'd burn that out on that so fast. You know, um, not that you don't already, but like that'd be really fast burnout. It'd yeah, have like the right. EX trial kind of spot where you farm something ninety two times for a weapon and <laughs> Thanks. And yeah. you still go? <laughs> I'm glad you asked that question, by the way. And we actually got that coming up in a second. There's one other thing before we get to it, though. It's uh, another question. I, and this is another one. I keep asking him. I think this is maybe the second or third time I've asked him was it about challenge achievements. Because this is something he's given me answers. He's like, yeah, I, I want to do this. And again, he said for the last year, he was thinking, how could I do this? Uh, and so to me, I was like, well, let's just do it. Let's just, let's just do it, man. <laughs> Uh, Look at the community. Space Temperance has done stuff. FF Logs has had their own challenge boards before. Like, yeah, we've already done the groundwork. They could just copy oh. and paste it, and I'm sure we'd be happy that they're doing it at all. Yeah. That's that's not the problem, really, with it. Yeah. So, so I, I've asked them about this too, and the big problem that comes from this is, and this is present in your answer too, is actually identifying mm -hmm. it in the game client that you've done something. And that seems to be largely because they've used the same sort of base code for instances for quite some time. Because in the Blue Mage, you know, Carnival, they can track like very specific things that you do or don't do. So mm -hmm. the, the the work just really needs to be done to update the, the old instance code. And I think that that's probably pretty monumental because they will probably have to be done retroactively to everything mm -hmm. that came before. So, I mean, yeah. they they already touched with it a little bit with the um, where you need all blue mages to run old content. Yeah. So they have mm -hmm. some way of detecting at least your party composition. But I mean, they could tell you to go do tank cob with that, but that's about it. <laughs> yeah, they know that eight tanks go in. But if you did something else, I guess it would be a little harder. I think they said something like a dungeon, like when do you when does it start? When does it end? Things yeah. Like that. Yeah, because yeah. they don't. The the I guess they don't have a way of tracking start time, end time for the encounter. The boss just kind of operates independently from like any sort of. Uh, mm -hmm. I don't know. There's 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 threads that aren't connected clearly, on yeah. the on the back end. But when you undersize a dungeon, it does tell you your time at the end. Yeah, it but does, I mean that's the but dungeon, but it's it not does. like the but boss they count fight it in when particular. Combat first so, yeah. Began or something. Yeah. Like that. Yeah. And and then there's also like instance memes, right? Like sometimes somebody's first attack is a little slower and it'll register and you'll have like a second or two difference, which we see in speed kills. Mm -hmm. um, yeah. And they, and that's that's after we've done a lot of work and, you know, Kira's put a lot of work into like FF logs. So the devs haven't done that work. So I could imagine it being a big project on top of what they're already trying yeah. to do. I mean, that's the thing. Like they're like, we have a so I'm sh I'm sure they have a billion and one wish list items, and they're like, okay, which ones are we gonna do? And they have to like knock it out due to what they have to consider consider was the high priority uh, ones to do. And so I I'm certain uh, this is like maybe near the edge of like the wish list part, but it just hasn't made it over like the hey we're gonna start doing this yet. Uh, is what I'm guessing because it again on his mind he's been and. They, the more I ask him, I'm like, maybe it's on your mind a little bit more now, right? Maybe you're thinking a little bit more about it. Uh, so that's why I call it glamour. Yeah. <laughs> Gotta ask him about it. I mean, and that's, when I ask questions, that's kind of what I go for, too, is that I, I want the idea to be there, right? I have a second to have that conversation. I want that conversation to go with Yoshida and have him just think about it. Uh, for a second, and or so. pique the interest of other people. Maybe somebody else comments on your video and was like, "Yeah, we want this," and then he sees that more and more people yeah. actually. He have knows an at this point, though. I think I'm done asking those two questions because he knows people <laughs> wants them. <laughs> he knows it's there. Uh, so I'll, I'm gonna, probably going to leave that alone for now, and we'll just see what happens. He seems happy with your question right now. Yeah, yeah, happy. You know, I mean, you're happy. Oh, 
I didn't do that. I was just re- referencing that he's on the show right now. That's all. Oh yeah, that's true. He is. He's happy with this entire show. Uh, he's laughing. It, mostly because this isn't the world first show. He's he's great. Uh, <laughs> so let's talk about let's talk about the extreme uh, extreme loot here, which you brought up, Happy and. Was this really because a diamond weapon is why you asked it? What, what problem? No, emerald. Emerald. emerald? Um, okay. Diamond I did really well on, actually, luck-wise. Okay. It's just a fundamental thing. Because, like, obviously, when I ask this question, everyone's like, you know, there's totems, right? And I'm like, yeah, but I need to do this 99 times for the mount. And I'd yeah. like to not have to spend 10 totems and do an entire extra kill just because I have a 1 in 17 chance of getting the weapon that I want. That's really all it comes down to. Like, why? It's, it's kind of pointless just to have the one individual weapon drop when it's such a low chance it's going to be the one that you actually need. You know how many of the same exact weapon I've seen and just never seen mine? How many scholar books and I... Yeah. I'm upset. yeah. Or weapons that your party doesn't even need. Yeah. yeah. Well, like what yeah. happens on patch day or patch week if there are groups who can't meet the DPS check week one and they got to go get the extreme trial weapon, they're going to kill it 10 times. Yeah. yeah. I mean, there's more right now, there's not. more than a 50 50 chance that you go in and it's not one of the jobs that people are playing. Right? Yeah. Um, and so he is coming up with a solution for it. Didn't he say? I don't know what his, his idea would be. Yeah, what, what would even be the fix there? Just adding like a coffer. weapon? Two weapons. <laughs> or a coffer, <laughs> yeah. yeah. So either more weapons, more totems, like two totems is now make it permanent. A yeah, or just throw a coffer in there. Just make it like yeah. innocence with accessories, but instead of like four accessories, just four weapons drop. It's like, yeah, hey, hey, <laughs> sure. <laughs> we'll start doing... We won't get weapons anymore. That's true. Maybe we'll just, all the loot systems, we'll go back to like normal mode loot systems, where it's like eight things drop. <laughs> it's just... Oh god! I gotta go uh, get my emerald bolts so I can get my weapon. <laughs> emerald bolts. <laughs> oh boy! Uh, he did. He did say he did feel bad about your ninety-two. He did. He did. Sigh. Yeah, he gave me a nice, loud, typed-out sigh. Yeah, I noticed that with a, a lot of the questions <laughs> I asked. It, it said like grimace afterwards, or it said laugh, or it just to show the clear intention of it and get rid of all the like interpretation uh that could be there about what he said but um i i wanted to put like every time he said that like when i did the video have like his face making that face like a grimace of yoshida would come up but i was like oh that's too much work. the one where he's like this yeah <laughs> that's the one yeah all right so uh now we go into save the queen a little bit and uh i had a question here mike had a question uh regarding this and uh mine was just what surprised him because i'm always interested in that i'm interested about because they're watching all the players as they're going through this content for the first time they're all on twitch watching i'm sure of it and uh, the other services out there uh for the jp side they're watching those as well i mean they're they're just trying to see what people are doing but apparently he's kind of surprised that people figured out the mini trap secret so quickly um yeah fool me once shame on you fool me twice we we walked by it and I mean, we got it on our first try because we're like, this is here and it's nowhere else. And there's a second one and it's nowhere else. We can't <laughs> we, go anywhere. There are these little bars. And we, we got a lot yeah. of practice in our group um, lining up around the traps and blowing ourselves up. So we're like, oh, we can all hit a trap together. Let's practice this some more on golems. Um, so then when we saw the mini, um, we're like, oh, we can we can all just grab this. There's nothing right here, but probably after the next boss. Yeah. Yeah. It was almost like common sense after BA that like there was some secret or trick that we just hadn't encountered yet. And mm-hmm. like Rin said, a bunch of people said the same thing in our group. It was just, yeah, these are only here and only here. Mm-hmm. And we had a lot of time to think about it. Yeah, I didn't think about that. I I got all of you were in like the front running groups <laughs> doing this content so that's uh well there, there was also the bug when we first progged it where the queen didn't spawn until you killed the minotaur so we had nothing to do yeah if oh. that hadn't been a bug at the beginning we would have probably went and fought the queen we definitely would have pulled it at least once mm-hmm. okay. and then noticed and then, she had a buff and just got our face kicked in well then we all probably would have gotten gone and gotten mini and then walked up to her and pulled her while we were mini and just gotten stomped again <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> <laughs> Oh, well, we go uh, under her to the tree in the back. (laughs) The trunk of the tree, find the Keebler elves in there and feed her some cookies. (laughs) 
Uh, well, he said that he's probably going to be adding a lot more of those types of things going forward in the future, which I'm assuming you guys are happy with. Like that's, that's I'm, you I'm happy with that. Anything but the Enigma Codex. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> This is a funny. way better I'm surprise. Very strangely thinking the same thing this whole time. Was... <laughs> well, you guys didn't like the Enigma so Codex? When it comes to Ultimate Fights, they said they made it as a streaming spectacle, right? So you could expect DRS to have been the same thing. So there's yeah. going to be some sort of gotcha. This one was fun. I'm all on board with that. Yeah. Okay. Okay. Uh, and the other thing uh, he was talking about this uh, was that intentionally he made... You know, all the groups to be able to be done by individuals, or not the groups. I'm sorry, the the mechanics to be done by individuals, so they could, uh, it wouldn't be so harsh. But now he's thinking of trying to make it more group, soft mechanics. Uh, you want to know? It's funny because they did that with DR, and then this is going to something not even comparable. The last near raid, the 24 man, is almost entirely like that too, where there's like nothing group related. I thought that was really weird because they've. In 24 man, they split us into three groups like all the time. Like it's a super normal thing. They do it like once here. So mm -hmm. I was surprised to see that mentality kind of come through because they really like to <laughs> gut check us on whether we can trust the other alliances very, very frequently. <laughs> well, yeah, then, that this, this near raid was like the same two mechanics for like every single boss. Yeah, you can, yeah flanks or. <laughs> but I can or, understand it because there were people getting banned for griefing from the last near raid for blowing up other parties. Yeah. <laughs> uh, so oh. we kind of did it to ourselves. Yeah. But I mean, maybe I don't just give know. us more responsibility that doesn't annihilate eight other players. Uh, I, I don't know. I good. I really like the like the design in Delum Regine because you know life is like a bag of chocolates. You never know what you're going to get in the group, and if the one person can go around and wipe the entire raid like they could during Ozma and BA, that's you know, or can be a pretty bad time for that person. Um, but they're saying you know as a uh, Yoshi mentioned before when you're talking about smaller main content, they want to have these bigger, larger instances so more people can get in there. Mm -hmm. And um, I think DR is actually a pretty good balance right now of, um, you know, you can't completely get carried. But I feel like once we get uh, 0.55 and the new gear that's going to be coming out for Baja, I think it's going to be a lot easier to get carried through that content once it gets like indirectly nerfed like that. Mm hmm. Yeah, really, really hardcore groups. Even before they allowed you to queue in with less than 48, they had already beaten it with 24, so we knew it was yeah. possible. Uh, mm -hmm. So that's, that's I, like I think the that... only gripe I have is that you had ex yep. exactly 48. Same. And then, I mean, you guys had the same problem we had. We're like, you get up in the morning, 47, 45 people, you're ready. Check one, two, <laughs> Mike's just going to walk away. Go AFK, <laughs> somebody's, somebody's off getting coffee. Like, <laughs> I mean, at one point, I mean, we even had people hopping between the two groups to fill spots just to go yeah. until the other group was ready. And it's like, well, I've heard I've heard it actually Listen, scales now. My alarm didn't go off, <laughs> and I need my coffee in the morning. Okay, if anyone else had been there to take the spot, I wouldn't have complained. Yeah, I mean we 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 had Robin log in from work and AFK just to get in. <laughs> so, mm -hmm. but it's that that's funny. that's the only gripe I really have is keep making large scale content. Allow us to undersize it. If it's harder for us, it's harder for us. Yeah, we'll figure it out. I think yeah. I think um, not BA, but the Lumen Regine actually scales the number of people now. No, at least, at least there was there was one sweaty group I heard that said they were kicking people that were uh, doing less damage than the boss was gaining by them being there. <laughs> there was also um, I knew groups that were kicking people who, if they forgot their essence, they just said, "Okay, we'll go without you." Yeah, we didn't yeah. have that option. We were like, "All right, everybody out again." Time to pop another. Well, you, get, you get to like the third boss, and you notice this one person keeps falling over, and then you're like. How did you not? I was oh, waiting. I've been, I've been using Skirmisher the whole time. And that's like. <laughs> <sighs> well, I, I think they've learned from that. It's probably going to be different in the future. Uh, I, I think they have it in a pretty good spot and they're happy with the content. We're just going to see another one of these next expansion. Uh, at some point. Oh, Two ultimates enjoyable. and one of these is what I'm assuming. Um, yeah, I think. Very bold of you. One. Yeah. <laughs> I think you, you ult think ultimates. ultimates. <laughs> I do. Oh, I doing that face Look with the face. Mimosa in his Look at his face when you said two. He's like. <laughs> uh, well, the other thing with uh, Save the Queen was the uh, style fates, and I think Mike, you were asking him if they were going to start going with these type of style fates in open world, right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. And he pretty much said no. No. <laughs> yeah, yeah. 
because of the yeah. protest time and making like actual fight encounters and fates, right? People don't yeah. expect that in the overworld. But what the fuck else is the overworld for? <laughs> um, me getting the materials to make my coffee biscuits. I mean, what, this expansion, they made us do like a thousand fates or something in like every area. And sure, yeah. that was nice for a month. I mean, they had the yeah, I was surprised system. they never. Yeah, they mm -hmm. never expanded on it. I thought they were going to keep adding items for it. stone to get people to go back into fates more. And they just they used them in a few new recipes. That was kind of it. Like, I think they should definitely add more items to that in the future. I recapped for a patch, and then they didn't really do anything with it. I'm like, well, I'm never doing fates again. But I mean, like the the A ranks and S ranks basically are the same as those critical engagements. They're bosses that have mechanics that get completely yeah. cold and ignored by too many people being there. But they yeah. are actually designed encounters. Yep, that's true. That's true. Uh, I would though like to see more fates that were locked in uh, and scaled, and they're like, okay, well, you have to just go in here and do this and be done. But I guess that it's just too much work. I, I... With world, visit, you know people. how many people would be upset if there was a set number of players and like every Gilgamesh player is going to get in, whoever <laughs> has an SSD. F and Gilgamesh <laughs> players, they're the worst, man. Gosh. Hell yeah. I say we go to their server and kill their hunts. Yeah. <laughs> Go ahead. <laughs> Not, uh, a yeah, Not a problem. Yeah. Uh, but I mean, that's that's good to know. Uh, I guess maybe I, I'd be more excited for it, but I understand the reasoning by not trying to put as much work into the overworld. I would like to see more overworld stuff, though. But because I well, really I don't do okay anything. With, I'd really be okay with another thing like we have with the camp in southern uh, in in South Shroud, where it's sometimes it's a defense, sometimes it's offense. Yeah, you can yeah. be okay with that. And there's also one in uh, the peaks where it's like a stop it before it reaches the end kind of one. You know, yeah, we don't have that anywhere else. That's the yeah. only one. They could make it to where the fates, like doing them and succeeding, open up vendors or other things on the map, and that would be great, right? We got like a lore based one in uh, the Asm Step. That was a pretty cool fate channel, like led you around oh the whole area, God. but it didn't the, open like, anything. It was just step like a. One. Yeah. At, the very, at the very end, you like got what was like a banner you could put in your house, on your yard. Yeah. They're yeah. actually. I caught the a... final part one day just by luck, and I was like, "Thank God." Mm -hmm. <laughs> there is a vendor related to one in uh, Northern Lenosha, I think, on the west coast. There, there's one where you have to complete yeah, the, the, one with the corals and all mm -hmm. that. Yeah, yeah. Oh. I think there's a minion out of that or something. Uh, well, I mean, <laughs> speaking of minions, no, we won't get into that right now. Okay. We will soon. Yeah. Nice try with the segue. Yeah, uh, we'll, we'll get into job identities, uh, to talk <laughs> about that a little bit. I was, so, originally this question, I, I, I wrote it, it was kind of harsh. Uh, I was just like, what, the question was just, what are ranged for besides the 1%? And, uh... I, I figured that wouldn't be the right question to ask. Um, so, so it was a little bit different. And so I wanted to ask him about the role identities. Because, I mean, that's what we talked about on the show before, wasn't it, Mike? Yeah, I was on that show. I was yeah. there. Yeah. And I, I, I was just thinking, you know, I, what are their what are they trying to go for with the identities right now? I mean, we could make up basic lines of, oh, well, they, can move, they have better movement in their range. That's what range is for. Then magical does a little bit more damage and it, can't move as well and then melee has to be close to the boss and that's like our role defining things but i was like maybe that's a little bit more in depth and so that's why i wanted to get into it uh and range, i thought well, it go ahead i was just saying range is there so the caster doesn't have to do the mechanics <laughs> yeah yoshi just told me so that nobody gets excluded from party finder he said that's the reason oh okay okay so no one's... he said please please don't exclude them okay also that's why he made devilment Okay. Thank you That's for uh, clarifying that, Yoshi. Uh, but he came back, and it was interesting to hear him say that, that he wanted to kind of refrain from making the, that kind of statement because he does have clear roles intended, or clear identities for the roles and places for them in the fights and everything, but he didn't want to say too much on it. And uh, I took that as, hey, there, he does have a mission that he wants to do with these roles and everything else, but he doesn't want to go really into it in case a situation comes up with her to develop in a fight and that one mission doesn't go through and then people will call him out on it because he doesn't want that to be the hard coded. Hey, yeah. uh, this is going to be how they should be in fights. And then when he doesn't 
completely do that because it does the situation doesn't call for it that he doesn't make people upset i don't know he has to be really careful setting expectations yeah like like if if he says uh all dancers jobs are to uh look pretty and support their samurai uh then just people just go berserk and they <laughs> take that as gospel yeah and then suddenly it's not my job to output a lot of dps or whatever right and if so without the one percent it's a big balancing act they need to do mm -hmm. a little bit less damage so you bring a caster now because the meta for like two years was to just not bring one. You just brought mm -hmm. Bard Machinist because you had piercing debuff back then and then they did so much damage and you had hypercharge that actually gave the party damage that there was no there was no reason not to bring them. You had double refresh to give your healers mana so they were pumping out big numbers. And it was just all around very unbalanced because you have two classes playing in the game that don't need to cast or worry about mechanics. Mm -hmm. So forcing a caster to come... You don't need a res, so that's why we have a lot of black mages now who are pumping big damage. Mm -hmm. It's just a big balancing act. I mean, we all, we all know the reason why they did it, right? Because people were excluded before. You played Paladin during a time when nobody would allow Paladins. My, my is... casual group I led did, but that's because <laughs> I led the group. That's the only reason I got away with it. But that's that's kind of it, right? Is is I think this expansion, you know, for as much as people complain about X job or the other, has probably been the most balanced we've ever seen things in terms of everything's accepted in Party Finder mm -hmm. with with the vast majority of the player base. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, and I think that it's actually uh, I, I wanted a little bit more detail on that. I wanted him to go into say that range this is what we want range players to feel like this is what we want magical range players to feel like but i i think he said this before in other interviews as well that he just wants people to play whatever and they they i'm excited to play a dancer okay here's what a dancer is it kind of falls into this role so that's what it's going to be he's not trying to like uh just because the style of role they're doing doesn't fit that fight as much he doesn't want them to be excluded and that's where the one percent yeah comes in so i it makes sense i guess uh I was hoping to get something like, oh, well, we're just going to merge ranged physical and ranged magical. They're really the same role. And then physical, you know, melee, same role. We're just merging it all together. Because that's what it felt like to me a little bit, is that they were doing the, uh, they're, they're adding a new melee. And so now it's like six ranged, if you were not going to separate them by physical and magical, and then five melee is what I was looking at. But that's not really situation I mean, at all it makes sense like I, at first i was like why are they adding another melee there's only one or two melee slots and they already have you know four five jobs now all competing for that slot and mm -hmm. um i mean when you put it that way if you like consider just like the straight ranged versus fit, uh, melee it does make sense um mm -hmm. a lot of people do the double melee meta yeah so which makes I, sense right in EU, you have to have double melee, apparently, from the show that we had previously in Party Finder, is that apparently they a lot of groups locked. Uh, I mean, it's not every group in EU, but uh, that was actually something that was common uh, in EU, is that groups would come up and they would say, oh, we want, yeah, we want two melee. But that doesn't make any sense. A lot of groups got hard stuck on T that tried to run two fizz ranged and couldn't meet the DPS checks in, like, the burn phase um, right mm -hmm. before Alexander... Or at the end of Alexander Prime, they, like, just couldn't meet it if they had, like, a bard... And a dancer, yeah. or they didn't have a yeah. machinist. Um, I think my yeah. favorite takeaway from that question, though, is that they mentioned that they they are very aware of the boss's hitbox in relation to max melee and mechanics, which yeah. is awesome. Which is also notable when you do the fights. There's a lot of things where, like, you either have to break max melee in between your GCD, or, like, let's take um, the door boss. You have to slide at a very specific spot to keep your GCD rolling, but it's there. And mm -hmm. they designed it, and they had that in mind, and that's what I like. Because a lot I of mean, people, like... They don't think about melee and how my positional requirements and why would they make a fight where I have to move around the boss and think. I, I mean, you could see north. it for sure in uh, Eden's uh, in E12S, right? That was like all the meteor movement, everything. Melee was always able to hit the boss in some way. And that's great for tanks, too. Uh, they did and a the few times the boss is untargetable. And you, yeah. you can do a lot of uptime strats on Oracle of Darkness, but you need very specific max melee spots. So that's available too. I'm happy. Yeah, I'm happy. If they make me work for it, that's cool. If they just completely negate it like uh, con flag in E6, then I don't like that. Yeah. Go Tom uh, for 10 seconds. So yeah, they, I'm a they firm are... believer. Go ahead. They feel free to make a mechanic where someone's not in range. It just has to be done reasonably so. Yeah, like, like Panto Crater, where, where a paladin could handle it, but a bard could also handle it. 
as opposed yeah. to like tanks go away because you're going away. That's weird. I think I'm going to be uh, honest. I love it when they make mechanics that don't fit into a standard rotation and they just completely yeah. fuck everybody over. Yeah. To me, I love that. I'm like, cause you have to figure out the puzzle. You have to figure out, okay, well now what's the most efficient way to deal with it with it not being lined up perfectly with my rotation, but we can see. Con flag somehow. sucked. Two examples where it was really good was Leviathan, where Maelstrom would go away and you'd have to start doing a different rotation. And like, uh, let's take Dragoon, for example. You actually started with a um, with a high jump when the boss came yeah. back to get another one before the phase ended, which normally you say GCD first, but you didn't. Another example is Titan. So you do phase one, and now you're going to depend on if it turns into a car or if he does the regular landslide first. And you got to change your rotation based on that because now you have to worry about your gap close. Let's take Paladin, for example. There's three different variations you could do in phase one, and then you get to phase two, and you're like, all right, am I the front or the back? Okay, am I the back, but everybody moved up so I can do this? Am I the blue? Do I stay up or go down? And there was just so many variations in your rotation that you had to think, and that's where I think that shines, where you have to think and adjust stuff because you could still do uptime or adjust things to burst. And you're like, all right, the, the jail is going to come out at, at six minutes, but the heal is in it at that time, so we have to delay our burst a little bit. So now I'll do two Holy Spirits outside of any window, and I'll be ready to wreck window as soon as the healer comes out and puts Chain Strat up. Things like that, super fucking cool. Super mm. fucking cool. Sorry, I'm, I'm talking about very niche no. things, but they're awesome. <laughs> I love that. And then they were also coupled to that tier that... so. That's my favorite tier of this expansion was, was mm. Eden's Gate because they had that and then they had Voidwalker, which was the perfect training ground for a dummy if you just wanted to test your rotation, full uptime fight, whatever, because then you had these other two wonky fights. And you had E1, which had like seven minutes of downtime, so if you had to go to the bathroom and make a sandwich, you could do that while watching a Final Fantasy VIII Limit Break GF. That's fine. Mm -hmm. As long as you were smashing square while it was happening. I don't know, it's just put on Shooting Star when that cutscene started playing. <laughs> yeah. Do, 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 do. But I guess I'll, I'll ask you to, to real quick, since uh, that rain show is what kind of inspired me to ask that question. Um, you, you, find, you Does that answer make sense? Like you can say, all right, well, that's kind of what you expect. It's not a big deal to answer. Like were you looking for a super divine role for physical or you were like, yeah, that's right. No. I, I'm I'm a firm believer that because Final Fantasy XIV is so static and and generally well balanced that these kind of topics are bigger in the circles where they are bigger because there's nothing else to talk about. Mm, it's true. So realistically, I didn't need an answer at all to it, and this is kind of I actually didn't even expect that he'd say that they have an answer. I thought they just I thought they would just say, oh, we know, we just make. I got jobs. You know, we wanted a job with a gun. We get a job with a gun. You wanted a job that throws <laughs> chakram. We get a job that throws chakram. You know, it's like, and that's it. I didn't think they actually had a deeper intended role. So that's it's nice to know that they're thinking that. But now, anyone who knows that answer is going to be like, I'm going to figure it out, and they're going to yeah. lose their mind trying to do it. Like, oh, it's probably this, right? It's definitely this. You know, but I hope problems are peanuts, right? They're small scale yeah. compared to what the game was years ago. Yeah. Yeah. Well, I hope now that I know there is some sort of answer, I I have an NDA signed for other reasons. I can just go ahead and just, you know, take that and go into a conversation with your shooter and say, hey, I understand. NDA, let's go. What's, what's the rules? <laughs> How you want to <laughs> well, then you couldn't tell us. It'd just be for your own curiosity. Yeah, I know. And I'll just talk big. Like, I, I know what I'm you know, <laughs> talking about. Yeah, and everybody's like, he's full of shit. I'm like, I fucking know. Uh, you you'll know. just make a tweet. You'll be like, range players these days. They don't get it. <laughs> Yeah. Uh, <laughs> all right. So there is a couple PVP questions. So uh, that I asked. Of course, there's none from Happy. Yeah, your boat's about up, isn't it? Right, Mike. Yeah. <laughs> See you, Balana. You'll come come back when you're done. Uh, you know. But Rin and I care about this a good bit. I mean, to be honest with you. Uh, Happy and Balana, your input, of course, is important because it's always a situation of how to, um, if these things can be interesting to people who don't play PvP right now. Because there's a decent amount. And we need, if PvP is going to be at all successful, it has to be interesting to people who currently either dismiss it or do not care for it right now. So... Um, you can't just want it for the armor, like walk in and put your penny on the table and expect to get the reward. Oh, yeah. Listen, I, I did my 200 feast wins for that little segue. I'm done. Hey, yeah. That airship is badass. It is. That's why I have it. 
But I mean, you could do that back then. You could do it in eight v eight. I think everybody like grinded out eight v eight. You did it four v four. That was a, You could do it while you were leveling in Stormblood, right? While the queues were broken, you just use yeah. eight v eights because uh, you couldn't do the MSQ. That's true. While everybody was doing the raw on lock and everything else, you could queue up PvP and you could just get a ton of EXP. Yep. Um, but the question I... Because I, they're coming off a new mode uh, that they're talking about. And they said it was going to be small scale. So I had no clue what the hell small scale meant. Because uh, I thought maybe it could be like 2v2 or it could be like 16 versus 16. Like, what are they comparing that to? A lot of to? people thought 2v2. Yeah. Um... And so I, I want to get what he said, or what he was actually thinking. And he said it's going to be either the same size or a little bit bigger than Feast is currently. Uh, yeah. Which, to me, is 8v8. I think they're just bringing 8v8 Here back. comes the 5v5 meta, which they can move into Deep Dungeon. <laughs> I wouldn't even be that surprised. Because you really don't need to specifically restrict 4 8 Like, there's no reason to have that same party restriction, yeah. size restriction in PvP. It's not... It's just yeah. there's no reason. There's no nothing to compare it to. Like that's yeah, no. they can make a five. Or, I just think they they'd have to recode it from scratch, and they're not going to do that. Yeah. Well, the the balance right now for four v four is that like each each of the roles has a specific purpose, right? So your tank is like your crowd control, uh, debuffer and buffer, and then you got your healer, which just gets fucked all game. <laughs> yeah. And you've got your one your one melee, and then your one range. Like this is their PvP role. It's like all right, healer fucked all the time. Yeah. yeah. Just. Fucked. How, how, just try not to be fucked. That's your rule. Um, and then you have your, your melee and your range, but range is shared between like your fizz range and your caster. So mm -hmm. maybe the new game mode will be something where they make it so it doesn't matter what you bring. No, I don't know. I'm, I'm just suspect. I just want some less convoluted PvP modes, man. I don't know why they're they can't just make a PvP mode that is simple and basic. You capture a flag, you capture a point, and that's it. There's no defend, there, there's 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 no capture, and it's permanently yours, and you get three points every, like, minute, as opposed to just giving you all the points. That, like, just stop making it, stop being so afraid of players being bad at PvP that you make no one want to do it, all right? Because you're making it worse. Yeah. <laughs> just, make, just make worse on Gulch already. Come on, it's, it's been around yeah. for decades. Yeah, I mean, 8v8 would be perfect for that. Uh, they could easily just knock that out, uh, and that would be the right mode, and I would abandon Feast, because they're, they're going to disable Feast uh, temporarily. They said maybe, but that means they are. Uh, they're going to disable Feast uh, going into the expansion with this new mode, and then maybe later it will come back. But uh, I didn't think about that. I forgot about Capture the Flag, but yeah, absolutely, that would be perfect for the new mode, I, I hope. And of course, I knew they weren't going to give me a lot of information about this because this is like a big kind of an announcement for them. So likely it's going to be announced at FanFest. But I just want to at least get a size, uh, some information at all on it. Um, you got a little tease out of them. Yeah, yeah you got a little something. Got, yeah. You, you say, of course, he's not going to answer. Dude, every time I do one of these interviews, people are like, why didn't you ask this or that? And it's like, you're not going to you answer. You get so many questions. <laughs> well, yeah, you get so many. And like, it's, it's an... There's some, there's a lot of thought to go into it, and you really never know, to be honest with you. But there's some things you're like, well, I asked him this last time, or like this has been asked before, and I know the answer to it, and or it's just going to be a complete, uh, he can't answer it because it's going to be announced here at Banfest in like a week. Yeah, like I somebody asked me why I didn't ask any PvP questions. I was like, they're gonna because that's an expansion thing. And it's like, yeah. it's like I'm not gonna Is bother it, asking. There'll be one PvP. slide hey, saying care. there will be PvP. <laughs> yeah, they'll put the one slide up. PvP, PvP. will PvP. be there. Look uh, forward to it, along with new crafting you. recipes. I mean, I could be wrong. They could, you know, uh, treat it kind of like they did going into Stormblood, but I, I, I don't think so. Uh, I don't think so. Uh, they all did right, say us capture the flag, capture the flag. You're mounted at all times. Okay. Um, if 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 you're holding the flag, you can't use any actions, and you yeah. move at fifty percent speed. Yeah. Um, and also there's a cruise chaser, and if you defeat it, you can use that to fly to the base. Okay. okay that's 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 the weird Final Fantasy stuff they throw in. It'll, it'll be up for six months. It'll be yeah. up for six months, and then they'll release a new one with the lunar whale instead, which will give it permanent buff for the whole match. And the previous one will be locked forever. You mean they're going to update the something about them. PvP after they put it in during the during whole, the same expansion? 
Yeah, they'll scrap <laughs> that map halfway, and this is the new thing they'll do. They'll give us okay. two game modes, and they'll scrap one halfway through. Yeah. I don't know. I'm, I'm excited for it. I, to be honest with you, I like Feast. I love, you know, that's just me. I'm I'm apparently a, a odd person with a whole bunch of other odd people who do PvP. Um, but I, I am excited to do something different than what we've done over the last four years. So I'm I'm very happy with. So I'm I'm just getting into the feast. Like I used to play it back in Heaven's Ward a little bit. Mm -hmm. and it's it's a shame that I'm not still playing it. Or I didn't play throughout most of the expansions leading up to it. I've always been raiding, but the stigma you hear, like if you're not a raid, if you're if you're a raider or you're not a PvP and you hear the stigma about how it's maybe not healthy or people mm -hmm. don't like it or or it's toxic, that's not actually true. <laughs> A lot of well, people are super friendly and want yeah. to see you get good unless you come in and you're actively ignorant. In which case, yeah, people are probably going to treat you like shit because you're going in there just expecting an armor. Um, but it's super fun if you get a hold of the game mode and you get to you get to a level where the games are played the way they're supposed to be played. But if you're in like unranked, man, I was on my alt and I saw Frosty getting into the, the season a couple days ago. It was the Wild West. <laughs> 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 it was the Wild West. Nobody knew what was happening. Yeah, that's usually what but it is. It's pretty fun. So I would say whatever game mode they do give us, everybody should give it a fair shot. Because if we don't, and we don't provide feedback, and there aren't enough people actively playing it, it's just going to get scrapped again. I'll and then it'll be a I'll definitely give it a try. Yeah, capture the bag. I stopped giving it a try after Astrologos. Astrologos is where I was like, I'm, oh, okay. I'm, I, I, I really can't do these these like over the top oh, it's mobile like mode. <laughs> yeah, where it's like this. I I hate like giant siege weapons and stuff in PvP. Like it's fun for like a zone or something or like uh, I guess for WoW references, I don't even like Wintergrasp or Tolbarad, but they're better examples of it, I suppose. Mm. But just when you're going up against like a brute justice and you get punched for sixty percent of your health. <laughs> And I was like, what am I PvP? I'm PvPing against a giant raid boss that can punch me in the face and end my life at any yeah. time. And it's like it's not satisfying. Yeah. Well what no, what I... about um like Shoot, Thief, don't say or, I'm sorry. No, I was gonna say in back in a Realm Reborn was kinda cool. I guess you I did like the four door people off the top. When it first came out. I did secure, I did I love C's, I don't like on Sol Hakar compared no, to C's original cool. C's. Mm -hmm. So yeah. And Slaughter was weird. I don't know why they did Slaughter. Hey, Slaughter was badass. <laughs> Slaughter was just going and kill. You go in with home gang and you take somebody off a cliff with you, man? You can do that in Secure. <laughs> it's the same map. That's yeah. true. Well, uh, we'll, see yeah. what, we'll see what it is. I'm hoping there's a couple of slides. Uh, a couple of slides they have on the presentation. Some point next week. A um, couple? They, yeah. I, this is the other PvP lot. question. Uh, is... I actually just wanted to ask about if they're going to still have a leaderboard. Like, if they're going to disable Feast, and I wanted to know if there was going to be some sort of ranking, some sort of, like, heavy competitive side still there. So all just going to, PvP is just going to be casual completely, and there's not going to be any real competition there. He did say he wants to keep competition there. He didn't say exactly about the leaderboard or anything else, so I'm not sure how that's going to work. Uh, but what I think was a little bit more important was that they were implementing a new PvP reward system. So, yeah, as in there probably there the are. way the way the game's grown by now, a hundred <laughs> yeah. people per data center is probably a little too low, right? Yeah, if they want more engagement. Yeah, yeah, I'm I'm okay with PvP, like people who are hardcore PvPers getting exclusive rewards. I'm never against that because if I really if I really cared, I would I would do it. It's the yeah. bottom line. I feel like that should be true. There shouldn't just be handouts all the time, but that doesn't mean there should be nothing for everyone else, and that's kind of <laughs> how it's become. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You gotta have some free chicken to uh, to lure the people in. Yeah, it doesn't have to be free. It has to like they, force they have you a to a couple eat. of wolf callers, depending on what you get. But there are some people who will get into it, and they're going to be bad for a while because the learning curve is going to be steeper for them. So they're going to be at the bottom and get nothing. Yeah, yeah. We'll see Which what is, they do. I guess fair. Yeah, they should get good, but <laughs> they do need a better system a little bit if they, if they want more engagement, right? Because right yeah. now the engagement's pretty low. Q times are pretty low, which is kind of a factor of the the way we have the feast split where you need one of each roll. Yeah, and they're getting rid of so, that, basically, with the new casual mode. Uh, so, so, I mean, man, yeah, capture the flag would just fit perfectly for that. And, like, they if they could make it where you choose your roll after you get in, like they do with uh, front lines right now, uh, I think that would fit perfectly, wouldn't it? Because you could always just well, adapt to whatever your group needs. 
How yeah, it's a big assumption. The top hundred yeah, per data center. I'll be honest. So Say that again. Happy assumption. sorry. The people who queue into PvP, even when they do the new mods, a lot of people are not going to be willing to do that. They're, they're going to be like, this is what I came to PvP on. I will not Yeah, change. but me, not- I just want to fucking win. That's true. I'll fucking cycle. I don't care. I'll, I'll... You play Black Mage? I'll play Black you know, Mage. Whatever. Assume people care, and that was your first mistake. It's true. And most people don't. I just, I've learned not to trust people caring. That's it. I'll care more so I can make up for them caring less. Yeah. Near. Are you and on your boat, by you the way, though. Mike? Did you make your yeah, boat? No spectral on the first, but at least I got most of my objectives done, so that's okay. good. This boat, okay. the first boat, is not worth a whole lot of points here anyway. It's the other two that I really need okay. the spectral on. All right. You know, well, Rossi, I was thinking about it. Yeah. Do you think they're changing the reward system because they have to? I just gave it some thought, and if they're doing cross data center, they can't do top hundred per data center. Yeah. Because now you're cross pollinated, so they kind of have. To do a different rule. I sincerely doubt you can queue for PvP on other data centers. I mean, we don't even know if you'll be we able to queue for anything on other data centers. If, if there's something that would benefit from cross data center play, it would be PvP. PvP 100%. Yeah, just make those queue times better. Yeah. Because uh, I mean, probably just be able to go to the housing areas and cross data center, though. It's probably, yeah, I expect that at first, but maybe by some point they'll let us do something. Mm hmm. So what? They're going to let us do maps, but then we can't go into. The deep areas of the maps. I mean, they probably don't even know. Have yet fun, either. everybody. <laughs> yeah. No. No. Um. Well, while I asked about a bunch about PvP, Happy asked a bunch about story here. Um. I didn't ask. You, yeah, it had two questions, kind of that got went related. It ended up to being related about story. If I got a bunch of bananas and it was two bananas, I'd be sincerely upset. <laughs> But you'd have two bananas, though. Yeah, but I could have five bananas. I guess. Or zero. I eat a lot of bananas, okay? I eat one or two bananas a day. <laughs> oh, jeez. You and Sphia both, man. Um, I love bananas. They're radioactive. Right. <laughs> so question number two okay. for Mr. Happy here. Um, the, the answer that they came back with was that uh, I think it went into a little bit about how they were planning past Endwalker, right? You, you want to know, or well, not in, past Endwalker, but past the uh, main story arc currently with uh, Heidelin and Zodiac, because uh, they're going to wrap that up quick. Yeah, 6.0 is the, is, there's no 6.3 is the finale like we have with, with 3, 3, 4, and 5.x. Mm-hmm. And the last time it was like that was 2.0, when 2.1 through 2.5 are notoriously not super exciting story arcs like it gets a little you know towards the end leading right up to heaven's word it does but if they're gonna have to do a bunch of foundation laying again for everything going forward then there's this obviously they've learned a lot since those days there's a lot to be said about that but they still should be aware that that's perceived as not the greatest time for the game necessarily when it came to story yeah um, I mean that might that may be why they kind of shoved that off to the um, they're giving themselves the whole point one to point five next expansion to work that out uh, because they've got to you know introduce a new threat get new villains out there because I'm assuming like all oh, that's just going to be wrapped up so like they they have a lot of groundwork to lay I think six one six two might be a little bit of a boring patch but hopefully it'll pick up by point three I don't know maybe they'll like because it's strange because you have to keep that excitement going for a while. Uh, so, I mean, they'd probably want to hype people because people, if they're bored by one and two, they're maybe not going to be there for three and four. All right. Yeah. I wonder if they have like a mid season like, patches. Hmm? Be good. Even patches. Who are you talking like, about? Like, like point, like point two. Cause if they do point one and point two as boring arcs, then point three would be really bad. Right. But if point two is something good, at least we'd have yeah. something to look forward to. Yeah. I don't know. Um, when it comes to, I'm wondering if they do like a mid-season finale to like really propel things in 6.3. For example, instead of like, you know, going all the way back to 2.3, we got introduced to Ramu and he wasn't that bad. <laughs> and then we made the Crystal Braves. It was like, okay. Mm-hmm. Yeah, well, I wonder if three... Go ahead. Blana. Uh, I was just saying, by point three, they definitely need to like set up the new villain and have some sort of like interaction with them some sort of uh clash probably like the the point three trial as they like to have that you know related to the story Mm -hmm. 
Well, I think uh, what was interesting about that response mostly was that they were so insanely focused on the finale. He kept like discussing it that way as like this big grand finale. It's almost felt like he was saying that this is like their one sincere focus. They wanted to have leave it off like amazingly. Uh, and so that kind of has me kind of excited because I, I don't think he's... Uh, I mean, he has talked about the story being good and everything, but this is right now at its peak, and he has to do a lot of work to make it better than what we had in Shadowbringers, right? So Even better than A Realm Reborn. How many people did the story in A Realm Reborn and was like, I gotta kill Bahamut? Like, you fucking ended 1.0, like, this is the pinnacle, I gotta get through this. So now they're leading the end of Highland and Zodiac? People have been waiting a long time for this. Yeah. I'm... I'm hyped for it, man. I'm I'm actually, you know, I do care about the story. People always talk shit about me because I don't know everything. Look, I don't know every little bit of lore detail, guys, but I care about the story. I pay attention. I know things exist. I know there's characters, right? And so... It, when you want to defend how much you know about the story, saying I know things exist is <laughs> maybe not the strongest argument to go with. I'm just going to put that out there. <laughs> I don't skip cutscenes, guys. One of the guys is like, what is an Asian? <laughs> i was like I okay. we're we're in the cutscene transition from p1 to p2 and i'm like that guy on the screen and that girl on the screen there mm. he's like what what what, what are and you they that makes me laugh a lot because is this taking the conversation on a slight tangent that has to do with lore knowledge pertaining to gameplay um mm. when tu was around and with the enigma codex hadn't been finished yet I said to my, I said to the group I was in, I was like, you know, Shinoa was actually sent back in, you know, sent back in time by Alexander to thwart himself, and I wouldn't be surprised if that's how it happened here too. And sure enough, mm -hmm. uh, so, I don't know. Laugh. I <laughs> everyone was caught off guard by that, and it, it was just that's why we have Ethis on the World Race shows, right? So he can kind of give us all the lore details as we're going through and doing the commentating. As people were progging through, though, you saw that mechanic and you just saw a very obvious solution to it. And you're like, this makes sense. Let's and during the product, they pointed out that Shinoa meowed one pull. And we didn't know why. And it was because Shinoa meows when they hit when the thing hits one of the crystals. Well, yeah, in Prague, we had one thing get hit. And we were like, okay, we do less damage. Don't let that happen again. So we didn't <laughs> let it happen again. Enigma Codex was like super buried in there, like it yeah. was because because you have to drop those crystals down around the arena, and you're like, okay, we need to put these in a specific spot to see Alexander, because you have to know like where they're spawning, because like the one closest to him will start blowing up or whatever. Yeah. Um, so that's that was that was fucking hidden in there. If they're if they're trying to you know be clever in, in the next uh, BA and the next DR, uh, maybe Don't not as that. bad as, maybe not as bad as the Enigma Codex, but you know something along that level could be a little fun. Yeah. No. Yeah. I'm okay with him not wanting to talk about post 6.0 stuff, right? Like, have our yeah. focus be on this because they're putting so much energy into it. So, mm -hmm. it it would probably I don't know. I'd maybe feel a little disheartened as a as a story writer. People are like, what's after that? I'm like, just wait and experience this, please. Yeah, we're just uh, so excited. Yeah, he doesn't. He didn't give you like anything for it. He was like, uh, they have the initial plan for it, and, and more include. And even future expansions, because again, I think any opportunity to reiterate and Walker is not the end of Final Fantasy XIV is going to take. Yeah. yeah. Uh, but he also said that the finer details aren't there. Yeah. Right? So that's fine. That, yeah. yeah. That's fine. Which is, we're under this impression from long ago, them talking about, oh, yeah, we have the next five expansions laid out and figured out, right? Because uh, he, he, they've talked about that a lot, how they have so far. Uh, of it is planned out but here they're like well let's just end this let's just do this then let's start caring about everything else afterwards so yeah you said they got it planned out for five expansions and we're in the fifth expansion yeah they've already laid the groundwork a while ago for charlian and and Maricidia, mm -hmm. so new world if they want it they got it yeah, yeah. um the other thing that you were asking about later in your interview uh happy was talking about the speed up for uh you know a realm reborn and if they're going to do that for future expansions heaven's word i think needs trimming i think heaven's okay. word still has baggage from a realm reborn in terms of design um they said they were going to rework ether currents i think they're just going to make it unlock upon certain story completions like a realm reborn mm. uh, like maybe when you finish all the quests in sea of clouds you don't need to find the ether currents you just now you can fly in sea of clouds 
you yeah. know, stuff like that. I think that's going to be a change we see. I, I don't see why they wouldn't do it. Yeah. You're not really exploring. You don't, I mean, you can explore the zones. I mean, that's why they put it in there so you can explore the zones. But back then, but now it's just a rush. It doesn't even matter anymore because they changed the Heavens Word Ether Currents a long time ago. They're all like on the path through the main story. It's not like that <laughs> one in Anya that's like out in a, like on a cliff through like the tombs, you know? It's true. That's true. I mean, just make it a, most of the final eight currents anyways is a quest reward as you're going through yeah. stuff. So exactly. Have that be the one. Yeah. Yeah. No. You know, you're going to cycle back to each area, right? You know what? Each time you go to an area, you're cut off from half of it. You'll get back there eventually and then you'll fly. Yep. Yeah. Now we, that, that means we've got even less to do in the open world than... I mean, I kind of like the Aether Currents. <laughs> I like doing them once, and then you just find somebody else to carry you around if you I, do them again on an alt. I like that until you mm. have three, four, five alts. Then I don't like it. So don't worry. People can just take their Lunar Whales, pick you up, and bring you all over. Yeah, yeah Lunar Whale service, you pay them 100,000 100, gil. That's seven customers every single time. Yeah. yeah. I actually uh, did make a good amount of gil ferrying people around at the... <laughs> I knew at the, the end of Stormblood. I knew, yeah. If someone's gonna like be like, "How am I gonna monetize this?" Balan is like on top of it. He's like, "I'll figure it out." Business <laughs> Done. Uh, yeah. Uh, but yeah, it's not coming. They're, they're not gonna do any kind of shortening of any expansion storyline. They he feels confident with the how it's packed together, and it's not not really a big deal. Making well, a face. We'll see. I'm not convinced. <laughs> it gives the people playing the free trial something to do. Hours of content. Yeah, it's, uh, all the way up to level 60. <laughs> if they shorten it. MMORPG, fine. Yeah. yeah. All right. Uh, even Yoko You know Tara. what? You get to do Brute Justice for free. Okay? You don't have to subscribe to be able to fight Brute Justice. That's true. That's true. Um, it's very true. But that's really all. I, I don't think there's a lot more with the story that we had here, but it was interesting to kind of I'm glad you asked it because I, I was thinking about that too. And I was like, nah, I'm not going to ask anything about speeding up the other expansions. And I was like, well, fucking Mike got me, dude. <laughs> I didn't even know yeah, he's doing an interview. Incredible. Had, it's incredible. We had no overlap at all. I was, we, we got to be better about this. Cause I, as soon as well, I'm just going to ask you one day, like, Hey dude, by any chance, do you have, <laughs> Did you ask? I had, cause I, as soon as like, I, I saw that, I was like, Oh fuck! Did we ask the same question? A lot of people got upset with us because they were like, "Well, there goes my question for the live Q and A section of the uh, fan fest." Yeah, be happy you got an answer now. It might not yeah. even get picked for the live. I guaranteed you an answer. You just wanted to see Yoshi P. And to be fair, I got you. Yeah, that's true. That's true. Um, all right, so I asked questions about Gold Saucer because I love Gold Saucer, but you know. I, hopefully chocobo racing yeah, yeah chocobo racing you know i gotta so i had to ask dude chocobo racing so we talk about pvp we talk about uh deep dungeon you know what content hasn't gotten shit this chocobo racing man yeah, they were, like flying chocobo courses and everything like they told us there was like all these plans and then they realized nobody cares and they just <laughs> no, it's so sad it, it is sad because i it's a staple of final fantasy and I feel like it probably needs a little bit more attention. And he, he said that, you know, they went in and did the revamp for Triple Triad. And they're happy with what Triple Triad is doing right now. Uh, and they were looking for what was going to be the next thing to focus on. And he's like, I'll keep it in mind. I'm like, fucking got you, you like 10 people for. out there. <laughs> Thank God we didn't get Blitzball. Thank hey, there's still time. You don't know. Yeah, Yet. there's still time. Stop it. Stop it. it, it may no. happen, man. Uh no. It'll be I, a new fate system. Give me more Chocobo <laughs> racing courses instead of Blitzball, please. What, you don't uh, want to be the star player, the Xander Knaves? No, I don't want to be a Blitzball when I grow up either. <laughs> well, I mean, sometimes as a content creator, I do feel like a Blitzball being passed around and thrown around by other people and, you know, just uh, abused. Yeah, so it's it's not far off. <laughs> Uh, but yeah, no, con Chocobo Racing, uh, I don't know, man. I, I just feel, felt, I really feel like it deserves something. A map, uh, just anything. It, it deserves something. Uh, Aren't you talking about trying to organize some like tournaments or something? I am, I am. I'm going to organize oh, a shit. tournament. Yeah, it's, uh, it's going to be 
Uh, I'm figuring it out. I'm figuring it out. But uh, I'm going to order some, organize something uh, at the beginning of next month. I need to start up my bird eugenics program again and get my uh, my five star <laughs> finished. Man, they could do a lot I, of it though. I, I gave up on those birds so long ago. <laughs> yeah, I can't stand it. What were you saying, Ren? I was saying they they I think they could do a lot with Chocobo Racing. Mm -hmm. I mean, if you just take a look at some other Square games, like Dragon Quest XI had a really good racing system in it. And, I mean, we've had other games of Chocobo Racing already. I think it would be good. People like Chocobos. Yeah. Yeah. They do it's like just Chocobos. a dated yeah. system. They, but if they, they don't have new and they anyone gave us something on it. else, people would be excited. Because, uh, I mean, a previous question at the Media Tour, uh, like two, over two years ago, I, I asked them about Chocobo Racing, and they said they had one developer on it. And he doesn't do it anymore. He's he's with Raid now. Uh, so I think there's a lot of content that just doesn't have anyone dedicated to develop it. They just you know they what? don't. Ironically, that means there's probably more people working on Lords of Verminion now than Chocobo Racing <laughs> because every every time they add a minion, it needs to get added. It it needs to get the special ability. It needs to get the animation. Yeah, but now those uh, people are working on the farm. Oh the yeah, farm. That's true. Uh, so that goes into my next question because I did bring up Lords of Verminion and I said I enjoyed it. I'm gonna be honest, man. Lords of Verminion is not bad content. It is not bad content. It's just no one does it. All right, it's probably the only my content I've never, never done. Just gotten to this. Come Who? On what? I so said my fishing boat's almost done, and we're just getting to this now. I don't have a fishing boat to get on for this time. <laughs> It's it's like have you so how much have you guys played Lords of Dominion at all? Literally never. I get all the PVE stuff and I do it for challenge locks. Yeah, okay. you do the you beat up the Gabu a couple times a week for uh, for a bunch of MGP. Okay, okay. I I feel like it's it's a good system. I actually play it against people. There's a handful of people out there who do like the tournament and they face off against each other every week, uh, or every other week, yeah, or however people. often it is. Yeah, One people. Bracket. Um, and so I, I feel like there could be a little bit more with it, but anyways, regardless of that, I was thinking they use minions here. Maybe we'll see them using minions in the future. Cause I had this thought and I, I can't get it out of my head about trying to do minions with triple, not triple, sorry, uh, final fantasy tactics, right. And just have, you know, a handful of categories and then put all the minions in the categories and if they're part of the white mage group, they are white mage. If they're part of this group, and they all just do different styles of jobs, maybe only like eight styles of jobs or something, nothing too complicated. And it's just different skins technically by using different minions. Um, and do some sort of like versus off with it. And that would be amazing to me. Um, yeah, they could reuse great. the I'd assets and animations from Verminion. Actually get some yeah. use out of all that. Yeah. I, I, I'm all for reusing animations and stuff, yeah. <laughs> okay. No, I mean, if, if they're going to do it at all, it's better to do it that way than yeah. You Make know. it something more simple to understand, right? Rather than overly complex, because then people won't get into it. Yeah, and yeah, I but feel... you know what's weird about how complex Lords of Verminion are? I swear they spend more time explaining the triple triad changes two live letters ago than they spent explaining Lords of Verminion, and one of those things is a lot harder than the other. I don't even know the objective. <laughs> I've I've never looked at the content. It's okay. It's okay. I forgive you, Ren. You know, you said the same thing about PvP. Maybe you'll get it. Next thing, it's going to be Lords of Romania. That's true. Yeah. Um, now, once, once I'm done with the season of PvP, I'm getting on my boat, fishing some deep seas. I'm relaxing. Well, Yeah, don't talk to me about fishing right now. <laughs> so, the reason why I bring up tactics is because I feel like with the netcode and with the game and everything else, turn-based co competitive fi uh, PvP is the way to go in this game. If they could make thing something turn-based. What? You're laughing at me, Bellata. I was just thinking, what if that's the new casual PvP mode? It's fucking turn-based. <laughs> Y'all just, like, light up across from each other. <laughs> yeah, Dude, they saw Yakuza's, Yakuza's going full turn-based. They're like, why not us? Yeah. Well, they getting Project Triangle Strategy next year, right? So that's going to be, like, a tactics-style game. True. Yeah. Yeah, I'm excited for it. Uh, mm -hmm. I do feel like if they made a uh, a turn-based system at, at all, that it would do well. Much better than Chuck Bow Racing because it feels like it's kind of laggy and everything else. Much better. PV people who play PvP, one of their complaints is sometimes it feels like you're sliding around a little bit uh, just because you're dealing with latency and everything else. Uh, if they could make it turn-based, it'd probably be a little bit more fun. But he said, yeah, maybe in a few years. So 
that that was kind of the the response back. But he also said he he's interested in new ways to do cards, new card games, uh, new ways to use minions and mini games, and a gambit system possibly in the game. So it that felt kind of more like I got a lot of big ideas. Just wait a few years. We'll see if one of them. We'll, we'll see. A lot of big ideas in the past, so I try not to take too much stock in those things. I'm still waiting on my roaming primals and my uh, my weapon racks that actually let me display my actual weapons. The and snowboarding gamers. mini game and. <laughs> yeah, yeah, no, not yeah. that one. No. Yeah. Uh. So going in past gold saucer here. Uh. This one I uh you asked happy was about the apartment sizes and if they were going to make different apartment sizes yeah um, they mentioned this a long time ago and considering that housing is always such a the, the common concession is that it's just always a pain no matter what you're either waking up at 3 a.m to desperately hope you get a house or somebody's buying the whole damn lot because they have way too many characters accounts free companies whatever the problem is so apartments just you if you have enough space to make thirty thousand apartments per thing shouldn't it make yeah. sense to expand that i don't know or yeah. get rid of them and make more housing or get rid of them and make the 30,000 houses <laughs> yeah well, Apart apartments are just the section 8 housing of the game nobody 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 wants to live in the apartment they're they're so inferior i never yeah. visited anyone's apartment yeah i i mean oh, i got an apartment i was very underwhelmed by it uh i i was like well i guess i have a know. doll ground in mine and that's there's just one doll or like a lamp and that's it i have a, it. Cha I have a chair <laughs> yeah, just one chair. The lights are off. Done. I, I just the lights feel, are off. I filled my apartment with all that the garbage I got from uh, the first Zona Eureka. With, like all those just like cabinets and armoires. The whole entire I have a room lot is, of like, it. Item limit <laughs> max just filled. Yeah, yeah. That's why I want the weapon. I would just hang all my weapons from like ultimates and savages on the wall. That's all I would do. I just want that. You remember when we used to get the Gordian stuff for housing? It's like expensive because nobody cleared them. Yeah. You get like the extra mm. pieces. Bring some it's like the extreme back. orchestrian roll week one and week two. That was easy money. Oh, my Lanta. <laughs> I was like, people use them. All the pots. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Well, they're not planning to do anything with it. So, I'm... nope. Nope. They're... They said they're focused on making more housing plots available. That's it. That's where all their resources are. That's fine. They start housing. To fix the problem that no one's ever going to be happy with housing. So, I need to find an alternative. No. Uh, so the other question you asked here was about crossovers, and you actually mentioned Monster Hunter, uh, yeah. and uh, just to kind of see if we were going to get another one. Uh, and no, no, no monster. Well, it just it's, it's kind of the same as the story question, where it's like yeah. we, we Endwalker. Let's get to like, like yeah. listen. We really need to finish this this whole Endwalker thing before we talk yeah. about that. Anymore. Yeah. So, like, can yeah. you all shut the fuck up about anything that isn't Zodiac and Hydaelyn for a moment, <laughs> please? I mean, they haven't. We're giving they, you sage. You might get a melee. Who knows? Just focus on that. They yeah. they haven't announced what the the twenty four man is going to be, right? No, that's good. We're going to find that out most likely. They said next. it was new, is unique though, right? Yeah. It was, they it said was it was Final Fantasy fourteen. Unique. And that it was going to be answering some long term, some long time mystery in the game, one that's been around since a Realm Reborn. Mm -hmm. hmm. The Charlene Islands been missing since a Realm Reborn. No, that's Eureka. Yeah, but. It's not canon because people didn't do Eureka. <laughs> <laughs> Listen, I made. So, I've gotten four hairstyles since they announced the hairstyle would be in the fucking thing, and I'm getting really upset that it's not a mount right now. <laughs> four hairstyles in well, four you, gold tests. At least you're not playing <laughs> Vieira or Hofgar. Oof. True. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, anyways, it, what was interesting again is that. Literally no crossovers are planned. Yeah, it's oh. just everything in Endwalker. Yeah, uh, which is I'm okay, I'm okay with it too. Yeah. But like in FanFest before, it was a huge hype for Near, right? And so I just thought every expansion they're going to do a crossover. Every expansion they had tactics before. They threw a Monster Hunter. You, all these crossovers have happened in some way. But here they're just like, no, we're done. We're back to just Final Fantasy fourteen. I wonder if yeah, I'm not maybe lie. COVID and cross like marketing yeah. between companies put a hindrance on stuff, and they're like, "Look, we're just trying to get our own products out right now." Yeah, maybe. I have a feeling this would have happened with or without the pandemic, because they've, quite frankly, they've leaned a little too heavily into it. I I, I think Nier was too far 
Near crossover was fine. I think it taking the entire expansion slot was was a little too was a little too far. Yeah. And no one like mean, how many people are happy with the near rate? I mean, there's a handful of people, I guess, yeah, maybe. They're out there. I like but... we got two weeks before I judge it. <laughs> two more weeks. What were we saying? There, I'm just saying that, that that was weekly quest. That's that's gonna be a big disappointment at the end. But No, uh, no, it's gonna be great. Two weeks. Two more weeks. But they're they're probably um they're probably saving up all their crossover juice for uh, their big 16 collab. That's going to be a whole hell of a thing. When you finally find out it's part of the universe. <laughs> my, my, favorite, my favorite thing is the, the idea that Yoshi P just goes to a meeting with himself and like gets up and like sits on the other side. <laughs> and right over. He's like, so do you want to do this? Gets up, walks around. Yeah, I think it would be a great idea if we could collaborate. He's just playing hardball with himself. himself on it. Like, yeah. we just don't have the time at the moment. (laughs) (laughs) let's just focus on in walker yeah just no uh all right then the other thing she had a couple questions uh that were that went around kind of pandemic and everything else that he gave us a couple of responses on um one thing i pulled from those questions that i thought was like really interesting is that he said something about the development team aren't able to go in the office and get physical letters like do people send physical letters to development teams? Yeah. Really? Yeah, I'm not surprised by that at all. I mean, you've got a lot of friends in the industry who, at the very least, it's like some people send like a fruit basket or like this, just something to be shared amongst like the office as like a sign of appreciation. Mm-hmm. And that's that's not all. That's not all too uncommon. Okay. I know for like Sokin's and Yoshi's birthday, they usually like try to put yeah. a package together to send out to them. Yep. Hmm. Hmm. I thought it more was just like fan letters, right? Cause people were just sending fan letters, and they were just going through like Maybe. a big bag of just fan Probably. letters. Probably, yeah. it's not like their headquarters, like their address, is a secret or anything. You know, it's easy enough to just send it there. I'm gonna start doing that. I'm just gonna <laughs> start mailing like letters over there. Frost is like, shit. You guys have been sending shit out for years. Fuck. You gotta I mean, get a so... fancy, some fancy parchment, a wax seal. Yeah. Go all in. Oh man, <laughs> you're giving me too many ideas. You get a calligraphy uh, pen. I'll find out like what version of like the edible uh, fruit edible things uh, that you could send the uh, edible arrangements. I'll figure out what version is over there near their office and send those over too. Dude, and you're Frosty Mogborn. You've got the perfect dude, Mog Mail. Yeah. <sighs> Anyways. They said now they focus more on social media and everything and getting that information, which makes sense. But I figured they already focused on that a lot, but maybe they're putting more focus oh, on God. it. Oh, God. I, I hope Definitely they don't focus on it. They picked up their game like on Twitter activity alone. Yeah. They've been way more active. Yeah, after the and they, They've also been commenting Twitter. a lot on watching people's like streams and stuff and everything, right? It's not something you heard a lot of before. Well, I knew they watched, uh, they did watch always when new raid con- to content comes out, they watch the streams. Like, they're always doing that. But they, did, they didn't really actively talk about it or, or like, post anything. Mm-hmm. But now it seems like they're way more on top of it, which is good for them because I think it's working well. Yeah. I mean, I used to think that until Ultima Weapon Ultimate came out. Because the guy, the guy who made it specifically stated how one of his goals was to make it a streaming spectacle. That was, we didn't, that wasn't Ukob. That was, that was Uwu. Mm-hmm. where we heard that and so the thought of that was like really interesting you know as much as people look back and say it was the easiest one now i mean think about how it was that week it was it was it got indeed. all of us it got all of us yeah mm-hmm. exactly it was it was a huge huge thing so i think since then really that's when activity probably went up in terms of like how much they actually pay attention to it uh and i'm well, glad I mean, to see it because it's a big deal I, I think technically that started with because they saw Yuka being like so amazingly re- well received. Yeah, yeah. and they're yeah. like, well, let's let's play off this. Let's make this the next thing. And they they did it again in T, right? Uh, it didn't go the same way, but uh-huh. yeah. <laughs> uh, so T got a world second on stream. That's that's that's, that's a big, big thing. That was huge. Yeah, that was really huge. Uh, one Shiba day we'll was get that first cool too. Huh? Even though it was an ultimate, Shiba was a pretty cool fight to watch on streams. Yeah, yeah. but they really should have picked some different clips for that whole Twitch thing that they've been Twitch did. They got, <laughs> Arthur, they got Arthur staring at the camera for two seconds for no reason, and they got me saying FBI open up, and I'm like... <laughs> yeah, that was really <laughs> weird. I feel like Twitch 
outside of the interviews and everything else, let's go. Let's go to that. How weird it is that Twitch picked that as like uh, a highlight. It's like it just doesn't fit the platform at. Well, I mean, maybe it does. All right. Maybe it does. Maybe <laughs> have, have you seen? You know, just chatting lately. I guess so. It just feels weird because it, it, for us, it's all like a big joke. But I mean, it highlights it in the wrong way. All right. I almost felt like that was. It's not the context. The same. Just is not there. Yeah, the like, context, context for that was not well enough established for that specific clip. They really just wanted the pod clip at the end, and they're like, "We need other clips to like get to forty-five seconds." Maybe. Yeah. <laughs> and then, like, uh, it, it just reminds me of how stuff like that can easily produce the people who are at Fan Fest asking about the. Uh, erotic uh housing and everything uh, like the erotic uh, yeah that oh yeah i've like, had a year of no events to cleanse my palate of that dumb shit and now there's like three questions that. in a row you had that how old is our warrior of light because i believe i want i need to know and can we ever have children as our warrior of light oh, those questions were horrible sorry that's, that was i'm not oh, sorry sorry Those questions don't. were horrible being oh, in the room don't. for that media tour was one of the most the cringiest most painful things that i've done at a fan fest before uh well not done but been a, like witnessed experience uh, right like, yeah just, yeah you're course. over there like pvp chocobo racing and that guy's like so erp in your game supporting yeah extreme raid parsing yeah <laughs> yeah <laughs> And they're like, I would have, never be I would have loved parsing questions. I was like, going to say end game raid prog, but yeah, that one. Yeah. <laughs> parsing uh, also. Works. Extreme raid progression. Yeah. Yeah. I uh, and I, I will say one of the final questions you had. Uh, actually, I guess what we're ending on both of our final questions here. So uh, your final question, he kind of discussed how he was missing like physical events and everything, which we can kind of really assume that he misses that because it, it does not have the same feeling being on stage in front of a Twitch chat. As it does in front of a whole bunch of fans. That's probably the scariest thing anyone's ever done. Yep. Yep. Yeah. You don't hear any of the responses. Yeah. You, just, you, you see, them. see them. All. You're oh, like, you see them. I'm trying to make out all these different emotes and what they mean and all the references. And uh, I, I feel really bad because it, Yoshi's like a rock star, man. He, he belongs on a stage in front of people. Uh, yeah. Same with Soken and like the the primals, and they're not going to really have that at all. Yeah, uh, they they were going to have like a small audience for the the fan fest thing, but that ended up getting the kibosh. Um, yeah. So it's just going to be they, Soken. They went back into lockdown, right? Yeah, yeah, they everything got locked yeah, down. They're, and, yeah, so now they're just going to perform a concert. Yeah, mm -hmm. but I mean, well, with streams, it's the same as recording it. But I mean, they it's so hype. Yeah, when you're actually there, it's so cool. It makes me feel bad because when uh, the original 2014 Fan Fest, um, when they did the Primals concert, it was amazing. It was great, but the people who watched it on stream were complaining because it didn't translate what, well. Was like the audio quality and stuff. I think the audio was messed off. up the mixing a little bit. Yeah. Yeah, and then the, and then the 2016 also had an issue, if I recall, where you couldn't hear the crowd, so it sounded like everyone was bored. But you know yeah. what? 16 and 18 were fucking awesome. Oh yeah, fucking awesome! Like they were all awesome for me, man. Uh, I I, I didn't go to come. fourteen, unfortunately. Yeah, you're just not but, true. You're not true OG. Sorry, it's dude. True. Yeah. It's true. But I mean, like I I enjoyed those events so much that like I I camped out overnight to be like at the front of the lines. Like those mm. events are really fucking. Based cool. on fourteens, you you most people expected you'd have to because that <laughs> was yeah. that was their first time and it showed. Well, yep. 16's merch line, you remember the, oh my god, that was like a big That's fire code like violet. 14's, the 14's. I, 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 yeah, 14's I wasn't was there so for that, weird. but I remember six, 16, they almost got like kicked out. Yeah, because of the, the fire. Yeah, they fire. were literally blocking the doors. Uh, And so, what, what was, <laughs> I remember that. I remember, uh, I feel so bad, because I, I did a, a discussion with Matt Hilton uh, before 16. He was like, yeah, one of the one things that we wanted to focus on making sure we're good was the merch lines. And I was like, oh, that's really cool. And then we went into uh, 16 and something, it just didn't go right. And I felt so bad. I was like, I know they worked to try to make this good. Uh, but they finally knocked it out with 18. 18 was... 18 was yeah, perfect. Oh, yeah. Yeah. Pre -ordering. Yeah. Yeah. Pre -ordering. yeah. Fixed everything. Uh, but mentioning like that, uh, did you guys order stuff for the digital? Yes, it's on its way. Yeah. 
Mine is not on its way, but that's because I ordered the Stein from Japan. Oh, <laughs> so it's not. Oh no. <laughs> See, I, I was going. I was going to order some of their COVID masks too, and it would have delayed the the shipment till June. And I'm like, nah. Mm, that's fine. I just wanted the Stein. That's it. That's all I wanted. Yeah. I got, I think I got the sweater and I got a pillow. Uh, I didn't go too crazy on it. I was just like, let's just get some things. Um, and they're on the way. I'm excited to see what they look like and everything else. I was tempted to get that uh, that Sin Eater shirt. It looks really good. Yeah. Yeah. Well, that, the Haiti shirt's badass too. It reminds me of the, um, the Shinryu one. I got like two of each shirt and two hoodies because my wife plays too. Yeah. So The, the Shinryu shirt, I, I still have that. It's so so good i i wore that when uh we were doing the pvp event uh because it just it it's perfect uh it's like a rock star shirt um that and ravana the slayer of the nath one those are like fucking rock star shirts they're so yeah. cool um well i'm going to talk about my final question now which uh i really i was just trying to say some nice things because i mean honestly it is fucking insane to me how long i've been doing this and how much has been done just because uh i'm been doing this with the community with the world race and everything else uh and he said before to me that like they pay attention to that which is really weird to me so when a lot of times when um yoshida says stuff like that i'm like he he's just being nice he's not not really watching any of these shows he's not he's not paying attention to anything but then uh but then he brought up the world race show uh where he was like yeah some of the world racers what they can say can sting a little bit and i'm like you know I think they may not been thinking maybe they you'd hear them uh, when they're saying some of the stuff that they're saying, uh, and so I, I felt a little bit bad. And then he said he literally called. I don't think he called out the ex- the right person, but he called out. He called him out Upper. for saying doesn't play it again. He called out the the, the statement. Yeah, the statement. Um, yeah. which was hilarious to me. So Yoshi P is gonna find Sindalf at Fan Fest. Be like, yo, I heard you're talking shit. <laughs> He's gonna have Soken in the primals behind him. They're gonna have their they're gonna have their guitars, just like, just yeah. like drumsticks yeah. and everything. Yeah. Uh, so it it was interesting because he was listening. And he said, "Oh yeah, they don't they don't play this game." Well, yeah, yeah, he fucking plays this game. Uh, he's made it pretty obvious, and I'm glad. He was he doing when did he get the good parts while he was drinking wine and eating cookies? Was that the same thing? Or was that a different thing? That's a different thing, I think. Okay, okay. But yeah, no, he, he had the one where he was doing E8 Savage in the Party Finder, and he, like, orange parsed. And he was just like, I don't think I did that good. That run. <laughs> yeah. So, he got, like, a 97 or something. Yeah, on Black Mage. Yeah. Uh, on Black Mage, you should be even more impressed. <laughs> yeah. Uh, and so it's insane. Because we don't think about that a lot. I mean, on the World Race shows, on like any other shows that we do, discussion's always like, oh, developers don't play. They don't, you know, they're just pushing out content and talk so much shit uh when it, that's not true at all and it's been proven a little bit more recently than it has in the past i don't think they've been as open about it i think a lot of the times that when yoshida was playing he was just kind of being sort of silly or whatever it was never really like really intense play he was never really being super optimal or crazy when he was playing but then he actually started showing it off a little bit more i wonder if those world race shows kind of made him be like you know what these motherfuckers well, I oh, remember that's how it's going to be. Yeah, yeah, I mean, that's always how it's going to be. Yeah. <laughs> I remember when um, they were showing off New Monk um, for 5.4's changes, and he went and he like put a dummy down in the middle of all Amico, and he started, or uh, Rolgers, and he started doing the opener, and he's like, I don't know if this is right. And everyone's like, oh, he's right. He knows the opener. <laughs> he's yeah. doing it exactly right. It's yeah. like, yeah, the dude knows how to play the game, and as soon as devs know how to play, they're always going to get everything right, but <laughs> they play the game at the very least. Yeah. Um, so I don't know if you guys have any more comments on that or anything else, but it, I am definitely going to be a little bit more uh, trying to put people in their place. <laughs> uh, now I'm, just... I'm just tempted to talk mad shit now, so I'm going to have Yoshi call me out. Yoshi, <laughs> He'll say Next that, uh, that red mage. The goal is to get called out my name. It's like, he's, he mentioned me. <laughs> <laughs> oh, man. See the famous yeah. or infamous, right? Yeah, yeah. I, I yeah, love Yoshida. Yoshida. I mean, it's. I'm gonna be honest. It's amazing that Yoshida actually takes the time to answer questions, uh, and give give us these opportunities. Uh, I, I 
didn't think when I, I started doing this stuff, and Mike, I don't know if you have the same thought, that I'd ever be having a discussion, like when we did at the media tour, where I'm sitting on the couch uh, across from him having a, a conversation with Yoshida discussing his game. I didn't think that was going to be a thing that I would do. Bro, I thought I was going to be laying in bed eating Cheetos at this point in my life. <laughs> 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 it's a, it's a, it's only an aversion of expectation, yes. Yeah. Uh, so it's it's amazing how much the Final Fantasy fourteen team actually interacts with their community in that way, in that capacity. Uh, we always want more. We always want more of it. But uh, I, I appreciate them a lot. And that's why I'm still around. If I didn't have, uh, I mean, with the community as well, like positive interaction from them and with uh, the Final Fantasy fourteen side, if they weren't like so nice to everybody, I probably wouldn't probably wouldn't be doing any of this because I wouldn't care. Uh, but they support us and I'm, I'm happy to keep going with it and uh, I'm looking forward to FanFest next week so I can learn my couple a few slides at least of PvP <laughs> Just hell yeah man if they no, don't I'm on that board too the first person I think of whether I they do cry. or don't show Thing. they're like no we're saving it for me we're saving it for like a media tour later in the year and you'll be like no just say something please yes yeah. Yeah, uh, just just sub information about it. I mean, I, I would like to ask you guys this: Are, Is there anything in particular like I I want to hear this at FanFest? I want to hear them talk about this or that. Um, summoner rework. Let, let me know <laughs> the details. Give yeah. give me a little bit. I, I think a lot of us want to see how our job we currently play will be changing. Like new jobs are cool and exciting, but I very much care about the jobs I'm already playing. I would like to see those continue to be engaging. Okay. Yeah, I don't think they'll talk anything about existing jobs next week, so I'm going to go ahead and just say I want to know about that scythe. The yeah. scythe? Yeah. Scythe. I'm, not, I'm just saying the scythe. I'm not saying what the new melee is. I want to know well, about the scythe. I'm just going to, that's it. I'm locking I'm it in. I'm pretty sure we're not getting a media tour this time around, right? Just because of physical. No, but they'll probably still do like a live letter because we because they don't want to talk about job changes now. They don't even know if what they have is like final. They're probably still no, like but they, way in the process. Yeah. They usually show a small showcase of like a couple of actions from each of the jobs once everything's said and done. And I'm hoping mm, yeah. we'll get that at least a couple months ahead of the expansion. In any case, just to hype us up a little bit. It's normally just a month. But when we get that a month before the expansion normally. Yeah. So yeah. who's to say though with the way everything's gone that they won't try to like fill in some dead space a little bit earlier. Mm. I mean, they got plenty of time, uh, to be honest with you, because I don't think the expansion is coming out until like right before Christmas. I think we have like Christmas. half a year. Yeah, we, we got some time before it comes out. Uh, so there is a possibility they might try to do another little event like the media tour. I don't know how they would pull it off or what they would do. But I thought I thought this was it. You, you, you guys both got some questions and I'm like, all right, media tour is done. <laughs> Maybe. Yeah, I don't want people ask who else did interviews, and I was like, I don't know, I, I didn't even know Frosty. Yeah, I didn't fucking. <laughs> yeah, we had no idea. It just happens that way. It was just, yeah, it a just surprise. It worked out the what we I was doing or whatever just worked out that oh this is the time window. Uh, all right, I got it, and I, yeah, there's no way to coordinate that at all. The no, they're real. Unless, unless every single time we're gonna email them, we talk to each other first. Like, hey, I'm emailing them. You didn't do that recently, did you? Yeah, yeah. We're, we're, are we good? <laughs> I I, like I said, I'm shocked we had no overlap at yeah. all. Yeah, that was the surprising part. Is you guys didn't know about it, but you didn't ask the same questions either. And some of them are sure. like pretty common questions too, like asking about you know the small man uh, yeah. raids and yeah. edgy, oh, edgy glamours. That. I came very you? close to that. That would have been the overlap, would have been four man like hard content because I, I very mean, much consider that. I'm assuming you and thought, hey, uh, that's already been asked enough times. I don't need to ask. That's, exactly what I <laughs> <laughs> that's also exactly what I thought. Yeah. It's always that, that line of like, uh, is this worth asking or not? And sometimes it seems because, Happy, how much shit did you get about your questions just, just out of curiosity? Oh, you want me to pull my comment section? Let's do this. <laughs> <All right. laughs> It's, it's the show usually runs long anyway we got some time yeah, we got? yeah, 200, yeah. 229 comments what do we got okay i got the one about all right the ex weapon drop issue isn't a real thing why'd you ask about that stop asking about eggy glam it's been so long they're never gonna do it i had no idea they even did it why didn't you ask anything about pvp shouldn't just be asking anything this i don't know why uh buzz the buzz is clearly beam answer is clearly confirmed since he said buzz in my question about giving us a teaser uh <laughs> 
Somebody quoted me because I said that I'm not. I'm, I'm obviously not going to ask anything that I think is going to be answered at FanFest. So they're not going to ask what's the new job. So I don't want that one comment that one dude who's like <laughs> didn't ask about the new job kind of cringe. So yeah. a few mm-hmm. comments that were just quoting that. Yeah. So we got some. Yeah. Why didn't you ask about hats on Vieira Hrothgar? Why didn't you ask about male Vieira and female Hrothgar? Um, yeah. Finish so many yeah. times. Yeah. That's, that's a lot. That's and it's going to get asked again. Yeah, yeah, bunny hair tiles and hats. Sphia commenting, "Hire me, Square Enix." Uh, <laughs> you should you should have brought that up. <laughs> yeah, 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 yeah. They need more playtesters. There's you a know, few things here, at least. There, there's, yeah, there's quite a few. and you're never gonna get it perfect, and you you never you're always gonna ask questions, and sometimes they're, they'll get sidelined. I mean, you, you don't know what's in what's in the presentation either, because I mean, you could be asking a question that's in the presentation. Uh, yeah. And you might not realize it, and then it's just going to get sidelined a little bit. And that's just how it is, because they're planning a show around the answer of that question. Yeah, I have one here. Why I want to know why Nin has reduced fall damage and Dragoon doesn't. There's one. <laughs> Hello? <laughs> that is such a panel Q&A question. I, would, I wouldn't be surprised that actually came up. Yeah, you know, wouldn't, wouldn't you remember that. when we were at FanFest, and uh, I don't, they, they stopped doing it in 2018, I think, maybe not, but they actually ran into the crowd and we were like, hey, look, uh, what's your question? And they had people line up and they would a- ask questions and stuff. And they didn't really do that, I don't think, in 2018, because they realized how, in how horrible. They formed a line. Yeah. They, yeah. Set up, they set up a mic in the center aisles and you formed a line. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, uh, I had somebody say I asked a Nintendo question. I'm assuming that's the Monster Hunter one in regards to Rise, um, yeah. which, you know, that's, I get it, but also why. Um, there was also one that, I can't remember where it was. Oh, no, there's a lot of comments. So when he said he watches our content, like he said he watches your content, yeah. he watches my content. And I was, he was like, oh, I was watching you guys and you were you know, spearheading the new content. I was like, oh, no, he saw Happy Brambles. <laughs> <laughs> Happy Brambles, I hope not. That is the most top upvoted comment. Is just quoting me saying that. Yeah, so, why didn't uh, why didn't you ask him about the intended brambles that the devs created for that fight? Yeah, there's so many weird intended strats that we have no idea about. <laughs> Did you know Leviathan, the head and the tail, both do split damage with their tank busters, and you're supposed to stack for them and not <laughs> just eat them. <laughs> nobody cares. Yeah, but nobody cares. Nobody cares. <laughs> yeah. Uh, Oh well, I, I I know he doesn't watch like every bit of content everywhere, but he he does pick up on stuff, and they they have a pretty decent pulse on things, uh, with content creation and everything else. Um, but I mean that's really that's all the questions that we had. Uh, we went and hit all of them here. Uh, happy. Was there anything else that like I didn't go over that you wanted to go over with your interview that should be brought up? No, I th- I think you pretty much uh, nailed all the points. Um, let me let me just do one last look over here. Uh, I guess the only thing is what he would do if we did get a Monster Hunter crossover, which was yeah, that's true. To Monster Hunter and Diablos too. I, 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 some people got a pretty big kick out of him complaining about Diablos back hit box. breaking its horns and stuff. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> it was like that's a that that's a gamer response, man. That you can tell that he yeah. he plays, yeah. He's, uh, he's whipping out the gamer card throughout the entire interview and at the end of yours. Yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> uh, I, I can't imagine it because when I think, I think a lot of people might think this too, but you know, when you think of Yoshida, amazing like producer, director of Final Fantasy XIV, he works all day, goes home, and sleeps. That's what people, I assume, think. So vid- him playing video games just doesn't make any sense and it's hard to connect him in that realm, I guess. But a good. Director, producer, probably would be playing video games and getting ideas and trying to... Uh... I play Dark Age of Camelot hardcore PvP. You know he plays games in his own time. He's, he's talked about it frequently. I remember yeah. the like the year Breath of the Wild came out, I was at PAX East and he took the Switch out of my hands and started playing the game. I was like, okay, have at it, dude. You probably don't get much opportunity. So He was talking about getting... playing Battlegrounds under... Uh, 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 PUBG. What was it? Yeah, PUBG. He was talking about playing PUBG. Yeah. And for some reason, that was PUBG hard for me to envision. Yeah, but uh, it's great. That's why everyone thought we were going to get a battle royale mode in in fourteen with a new PvP <laughs> map. We got he it constantly seven brings up um, being a fan of Blizzard, right? Yeah, he and loves Blizzard. He's, I'm sure he's played WoW plenty. Uh, and we even got when when Monster Hunter Worlds came out. Remember, he had to apologize to people because the launch day was the same as a patch day, and he's like, "I'm sorry." So he's obviously aware of, and, and he probably plays the Monster Hunter series. If you could just go off of that information, and then he brings up. 
wanting Diablos in the game and like things that would work well. And he's correct. Nidhogg would be a, a good choice for a monster in a game. So he's very aware, which is something yeah. you want from somebody who's creating games. Yeah. And also on the, the Blizzard thing, he, he's gone to BlizzCon plenty. So every year, pretty much yeah. that he could. Yeah. Um, well, with that, and I think with, I, I kind of said all the stuff that, uh, about my interview and I try to just highlight it again. Uh, if guys, if you want to read these directly and actually read the full questions and answers and everything else, uh, I can give you the links to them. Give me just a second to pull that up. I'll throw it in chat again. Uh, definitely worth, uh, and happy. I gotta say you did an amazing job with your interview. So kudos, dude. Hey, thanks, man. Yeah. A lot of people really want me to be more hardball with questions, but I've, I've learned over the years that's not Yoshi P. If you give him the chance to talk, he eventually just says things, and the summoner yeah. comment should be proof of that. Yeah, just point him in a direction, and you'll get something. And yeah, yeah, I think it was well done. Comfortable. Yeah, yeah. Uh, Ren, Belana, did you have any other questions about the interviews that you want to talk about, or feel pretty good about it? No, I think we we covered everything, and they're pretty well. Okay. Pretty pretty thorough discussion here. Yeah, with two yeah. hours, we did it, dude. I was I was worried you guys both did like twenty minute videos on your own stuff already. I'm like, well, what the fuck are we gonna talk about now? Yeah, I just fucking read it, right? Did I just read, read it, and it ended okay, up to be twenty over. minutes. I was like, this is there. I saw I saw Happy's video. It was like eighteen minutes. It's like oh, my video is gonna be like ten minutes, and just like I read it just word for word. I'm like, right. well, <laughs> fuck. And my my video was you. longer. I was like, god damn it. Was there, and I had was one there a question, question. Either you happy or frosty wanted to ask, but you didn't because you assume it's going to be it on um fanfest. Uh, there was some that I wanted to ask. Uh, the, more PvP questions. There's a lot of PvP questions I wanted to ask, but I was like, it's pointless to dive into it when they are change. They're kind of going to disable feast for a while, so all the core feast stuff that I want to talk about, he's not going to have an answer Just for any of it. Uh, and then uh, a lot of the other stuff they're going to announce during the digital fan fest is what I assumed, uh, or it's going to be stuff that they want to announce in the future. So I didn't want to dive too much into PvP in general. I wanted to, but I. It seemed pointless. Yeah, because, like, anything I'm going to ask is going to be Endwalker or later related. And mm -hmm. how that's a line to dance that. And they're just not going to give you the info when they. Yeah, they're not going to give me another teaser on, sure. you know, what the theme of the 24 man is or why is La Habrea and Pandemonium and, like. Yeah, Were those the Magus not... sisters in the wall? Like, Yeah, well, yeah, they're going to be like, that's a real interesting thing you've just noticed. Please watch FanFest. Like, that's yeah, it's, yeah. as good as it's going to get. And that's, that's always the difficulty with being so close. After the event is really nice, mm -hmm. but before is brutal. That's why those uh, the Q and A's after day one are really good uh, at the media, the digital of it. Or not the I'm sorry, the real well, physical yeah, fan fest. The ERP question comes up, yeah. Then yeah. then as long as we cut that one question out, then we're good. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, so I think uh, I, there's still plenty I want to ask. I, I just you know I could probably write a book of questions for him, but doesn't have time. <laughs> he was going to write a book as one of my answers, so you guys yeah. can exchange. Yeah, but all right. I guess we'll go ahead and wrap all this up. Uh, I hope you guys enjoyed watching this show. Everybody's watching right now because I wanted to discuss this, and I was good. I was thinking, let's do a show just uh, on the interview I had. And I was like, you know what? Fucking happy. Let me pull his shit in here too and start talking about him. Uh, and if you weren't going to be on the show, happy, I would have still talked about your questions. I'm just gonna. That's fine. We were going to talk about yours on Stay of the Realm, but Sly stayed up till seven in the morning playing Resident Evil Eight. So. <laughs> <laughs> you don't understand. It's a new game. <laughs> yeah yeah uh but anyways let's go ahead and do our closing statements and everything and have everybody uh ren can you uh go ahead and say anything last you want to say shout outs who you want to shout out to and more people could find you if they want to yeah i have um shout outs to the pvp community for the last three weeks at least on aether for mm -hmm. making the game exciting and enjoyable again because i've been pretty bored with the content so it's been awesome getting into that and uh you guys can find me at Rin Gargani on Twitch and on YouTube. It's a weird Japanese name that I'll type in chat because I can do that. Yeah, do it. I think you have my, mod um, in my chat. Yeah, I do. There we go. I think, yeah, um, I and does that work? Yes, it does. Yeah, um, it's been really fun. And after FanFest, when the season closes for Feast, we're going to be going back into more all tank challenges. We're going to be doing an Eden's tour. So we're going to go through all the Savage fights there. And then we're going to try to do um, five tank and then the required jobs for Uwu, and then a six or seven tank T, which is going to be a challenge. <laughs> so we'll see what happens. 
Um, you know, yeah, thank you for having me. You know, it's funny. Uh, I, I do want to bring that up when Diamond Weapon came out, and you're like, "Okay, we beat it. Time to ta- um, I'll tank it." Like immediately <laughs> afterwards, we, we got some comments. Somebody was like, "How did you guys do this when we're failing the DPS check with a comp?" And I was like, "Uh." That's not an answer you want the question to. <laughs> it's not an answer you want the question to. Probability you might be one of the reasons. <laughs> uh, all right. And then uh, following up, Happy, tell everybody who you are, shout outs, and where they can find you. All right. Actually, no, 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 don't tell them who you are. Sorry. That's stupid. That was the intro. Uh, but, you know, d- tell people where they can find you. Any shout outs, anything else you want to say after this show? Yeah, you can uh, find all my content on YouTube, Twitch. Stream seven days a week, seven hours a day. Uh, and then YouTube occasionally. Doing silly videos now, too. And one on Gathering. That was uh, that one came to me. I want to do Final Fantasy XIV Pawn Stars. Because <laughs> Pawn Stars script writes itself. Yeah. So it's literally the same thing. So I just want to take like Speed Belt, since it's being deleted from the game. And just do a, just do a quick episode with it over in Mordona. So that would be fun. <laughs> Okay, a lot of okay. that on a personal level. <laughs> he's like, oh no. Not but, the speed belt. Not the speed belt. You know how much time um, he's been also a lot of stuff on Instagram and Twitter. Mm. I'm going to be doing most of the Eorzea Cafe recipes um, over the next week. So those will be on Instagram and Twitter most likely. So. I get so pissed every time I see one of those, dude. I just fucking get angry. <laughs> just, it's like there's good food there, but I can't eat it. What? You want some leftover French onion soup that I have? I other? would take it. I would drink it, dude. I would. Uh, anyways, uh. anyways, uh, and that, every you're Mr. Happy one, one two two seven everywhere, literally everywhere. Yep. Yeah. All right, Balana. Don't tell people where you can find you because they're not. You you don't have a presence literally fucking anywhere. You don't stream you anymore. I, you don't do anything. I tweet fucking, sometimes. You don't fucking oh, okay. do. All right, all right, man. I don't stream, though. No, I haven't, I haven't streamed in a hot fucking minute. I just did some, like, wow stuff, and you just keep pulling clips from that for, your, for the intro, but... <laughs> Play Final uh, Fantasy! Oh, go ahead. I mean, I actually, I have been playing lately. I've actually been getting back to the game, you know, after 5.5, five, been, been grinding... Like, we started a, a Mount Farm static, so that's going on tonight. We've gotten one drop out of 60 kills, yeah? Only, uh... <laughs> and then we're going, we're going until well, everybody has all their mounts. Oh, we're doing all of them. We we have like thirty emerald weapon, thirty emerald kills, like twenty Hades and a few other ones, and we've gotten one drop. So, mm. uh, but <laughs> shout out to everybody watching. Thanks for thanks for coming out and, and watching us ramble on. You can follow me on Twitter at uh, Bolana Raw if you want to tune into my musings there. Uh, thank you, Frosty, for having me on again, and thanks to both you, Frosty and Happy, for uh, asking these these questions, getting the interview going. Um, it's good having people that are like you know really plugged into the community, able to. You know, get in touch with the developers and, and ask them questions like this, because other times we'll just have people asking about strange housing occurrences. Um, <laughs> Shout out to the PR team. They're the one who makes it all happen. Oh, yeah. Yeah. Absolutely. yeah. yeah. Uh, also, um, uh, shout out to Velvet if you're still watching. I got to do that real quick, you know. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah. All right. Well, I you guys have all been amazing, so thank you so much for coming on the show. Uh, I had a lot of fun here today. Um, next week... I, we will be covering uh, the Digital Fan Fest day one. And so basically, Digital Fan Fest is going to happen. We all sleep. We wake up. We're going to have a mock talk about day one stuff. Then Digital Fan Fest day two is going to happen. Um, and it's already been announced and it's public and everything. Uh, but just to remind everyone, uh, right before the Primals concert, the Gillionaire thing's coming up that both Happy and I are a part of. So you guys probably want to check that out. So stay awake a little bit and, and watch that uh Wait, who's, you, who's your guys team what happened Bolana? i don't you i don't know are you guys on the same know. team oh well i don't know I, well, our names are on it that's all i got oh, right. oh okay yeah. I, I figured i, I figured it's like at this anonymous for the captain uh, yeah, that's, that's good to us yes mm-hmm. what were you saying happy sorry i keep like your mic goes down a little bit when everyone else talks so i feel really bad no, I mean it's this. It's the same. I, I, I mm-hmm. the same thing happens to me or other people's mics go down when like you talk. Actually, <laughs> so like Rins goes down. Yeah. Um, yeah, that's probably going to be difficult to keep people awake for the concert if we're if, if it's us answering lore questions. But I'm hoping we can put on a good show. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Just, we'll see. Uh, we don't but yeah, you and I, Frosty. <laughs> Frosty, you answer the you answer the lore questions for your team. 
<laughs> Show people you know your stuff. Man, I know everything about lore. Uh, I, this is proven. Anyways, guys. Anyways, uh, I just want to do a shout out to that. And I think that uh, it's going to be exciting next week. You guys better be watching the live letter. Or, not, not live letter and the opening, at least, for FanFest. Because uh, that's going to be some really cool stuff. And they're going to have a lot more panels in there. And that's going to be pretty awesome to watch. That's Don't all next forget week. to buy beer. For the live letter drinking game. Oh, yeah, we got to do that. Too. Yeah, I need to go. Well, I don't know if I've... Anyways, whole nother topic. I'm not going to do another tangent. Thank you so much to my wife, uh, Carrara, for putting up with me doing this every weekend. Uh, I do start a new job next week, and so that does mean that my time might be a little bit more chaotic. Uh, so I'm going to do my best uh, still for weekly shows, but we'll see how that goes. Um, and then uh, thank you very much, Andre Kane, for the intro and closing music that we use here. And thank you very much... Uh, to all the Patreon supporters, all the supporters out there completely of the show, people who just come to watch, it means a lot. Uh, and until next time, remember, keep cool, be good, stay frosty, bye! Bye! Everybody say bye! Bye! Goodbye! Bye. See you later! Hey y'all, thanks for watching the show. I hope you guys enjoyed it as much as I enjoyed talking with our guest here today. It was definitely a blast to go over all the interviews and kind of the responses Yoshida gave back. Uh, I do want to go ahead and thank our high-tier Patreon supporters. Uh, we have a few uh, that also run some really cool services and websites for the Final Fantasy XIV community. One is Ockmorning.com, uh, uh, made by Nimic. Uh, the other is uh, the Fade Temperance community that runs a lot of different uh, events for the PvE community. Uh, Uni is helping out with that. And then Super Miu, who runs... Team Craft, uh, awesome website if you're into crafting. And I forgot to mention, of course, Ock Morning is your kind of uh, rating website you can go to for all kinds of things. I think they have a lot more than that, too. Uh, just go ahead and check it out. Uh, and then uh, we also have some very high-tier supporters uh, who, who just, just love to help the show out, which is Nami, Dudas Antonio, D Fury, Daniel H., Megan C., Tag, and Dirk. Of course, there's many more supporters out there, but this is one of the incentives we have for the higher tier, uh, and I want to make sure I, I do my part for that. Uh, just a reminder, we are also, I'm trying to put as much merchandise on Patreon as I can for like hoodies and t-shirts and uh, mugs and stickers and stuff, just so there's at least something else you guys are getting besides just uh, you know supporting the show. I, I want to show my appreciation as well. But then again, uh, you know, thank you guys all for watching again. We'll be back next week. And uh, bye. Remember to keep cool, stay frosty. Bye.